Okay. I think, I think the crows are about to come out. Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Football Park for what can only be described as one of the most historic occasions in South Australian sport. The first game ever played in the AFL by the Adelaide Camry Crows, and what an occasion it's going to be. There must be at least 30,000 people inside the ground now, and the car's still streaming down Westlakes Boulevard. We're just two or three minutes away from a kickoff. The crowd absolutely in fits of excitement and uh, the conditions down there perfect for football but to tell us more about them let's cross down to Max Stevens and the Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Motors ground report. Certainly is Andy a crowd as you said at the moment of about 35 to 40,000 I'm sure in the next few minutes that will increase conditions here at Football Park well I tell you what you couldn't ask for any better we had a top of 36.8 degrees currently our temperature is quite warm still at 25.1 now, as I said, conditions, the field here at Football Park are sensational. The wind's coming from the uh, north at about 5 to 10 knots. The humidity, it won't cause too much of a problem for the players, around 18. And the forecast, fine and mild. Thanks very much, Max, for that report. As I said, a tremendous reception for the Crows when they made their first appearance here tonight. We're waiting for the Bombers to come out. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be right there with the kickoff. Now, if I went like that, right, and is that my audio okay there? Okay, let's go again. Andy, just give us a quick throw. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Football Park for a history-making match. The first ever match played between the Adelaide Football Club, the new club in the AFL, the Crows, and the Essendon Bombers, last year's grand finalists. Conditions down there on the ground? Well, let's find out straight away and have our Mitsubishi Motors ground report with Max Stevens. Thanks very much, Andy. Well, a crowd at the moment of about 35 to 40,000, and they're still flooding in the gates of Football Park. Conditions? Well, conditions are ideal. We had a top of 36 degrees, and the fine weather will continue for this game between the Adelaide Crows and Essendon. 25.1 degrees, it'll stay around that way. The wind coming from the north at about 5 to 10 knots. The humidity won't cause too many problems for the players. 23 degrees humidity. The forecast fine and mild with some great weather coming in the next few days. Thanks very much, Max. Well, both teams out on the ground. Cars still streaming down Westlakes Boulevard. We'll take a short break and then we'll be back with the first bounce. Okay. Well, I'll just... Mate, this is the doctor. Yeah. 
Great team you got. One out all out. Should have been the union. Yeah, just about. You're not Right, okay, ready to rock. Should have been a little bit too. Which one do you want? 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 Don, you're going to have to bear with me for this, but obviously this is for the cameraman, so you don't have to worry too much. Okay. Anthony Danaher, well, 11 week suspension. 19. Sorry, you're right. You are right, Terry. Let me get that right. Anthony is 6. Terry. Terry's playing, isn't he? Someone told me. No. You know, what numbers he normally wear? Blow number six. Five. Right. And brother Anthony is six. Five is Terry down here. I bet you're glad you don't work with me all the time. Kieran Spawn. You can tell me Kieran Spawn's gone blonde. Seventeen. Kieran Spawn. He has gone blonde. Well, he wasn't blonde the last time we saw him, but he's blonde now. <clears throat> Has he? Oh, of course he married a basketballer. Um, I can tell you a name. Um, 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 Vicky somebody. Went to play for Coburg. Spawn. Eddie Hocking. Pitcher. Great Eddie Hocking. Central District German. Hey, Tone, can I grab one of those revolting drinks, that Diet Schweppes or whatever it is? Thanks, mate. No, they've just got this Diet Schweppes. Oh, no, that lemon, that's great. Yeah. No, I'll have that natural lemon. That's beautiful. Thank you, mate. Only Bruce McAvaney. Right. Bruce McAvaney? Oh, I would say here on Cairns. <coughs> now, Don, how often do you want me to cross to Max? Like 10 times a quarter just to give him plenty of practice? Right. Okay. God, can you believe this crowd? Practice match. Yeah, yeah, have a look at the boulevard. I got it up past four. The bloke wouldn't open the gate. He said, I'm sorry, we don't open till five o'clock. I said, hey, you don't open, we don't do a live cross. I get me bum kick. Can you open the gate? And he said, no. So I just came in the admin car park and he said, oh, yeah, okay. <coughs> right, interchange, Carl Thorpe, O'Brien, Antrobus, Hills, and Alessio. God, that's far away. <laughs> okay. Thank you. This will be fun. Welcome back to Football Park. As we said, an historic occasion here. The first ever match between the Adelaide Camry Crows and last year's grand finalists, the Essendon Bombers. First tip to the Camry Crows through Romano Negri, comes straight to Essendon, and he is unloaded by Andrew Jarman. But now Essendon looking to go forward. And a good tackle there applied by Scott Lee. And the first free of the match, in fact, it's not Scott Lee, it's Rodney Maynard playing on the half-back line tonight. Puts the king kick across centre. Big leap from behind by the Bombers. Paul Morris, a name we don't know too well here in Adelaide, played a little bit of football last year. Free kick given against the Crows, so the Bombers will go forward through Terry Danaher. He 
he's looking straight away for his full forward in Paul Salmon. The big leap from behind. Can't take the mark. Ball comes to ground and cleared now by McGuinness. Comes to Matthew Kelly, one of the rookies in the Crows side. And picks out David Marshall on the outer grandstand wing. Marshall gets away from his opponent, goes straight down the flank. Scott Hodges there at full forward, but a good grab to Bruce Lindner. A great the people here in Adelaide like to have him back in town, the president. Bruce was an excellent footballer here with the West Adelaide Bearcats. They'd make that the West Adelaide Bloods. And he'll be lining up from just on the 50 metre line. Kicking from the best part of Football Park to kick in the goals. Certainly that's the flank he wants to be on. As we said, an enormous crowd here at Football Park. Linda lines up. Michael Long on the mark. It's a pretty good kick from Linda. Just offline goes through for one point. So the first score on the board. A history-making point to the Adelaide Crows. Anthony Danaher to bring the ball in for the Bombers. Peter Somerville gets, gives him a lead, but he goes to the other side of the ground, the outer side of the ground. And a good kick in from Danaher. We've come to expect that from him. A tremendous player in AFL football over the years. Ball goes to ground. And umpire. Mark Mackey elects to bounce. In fact, it's not Mackey at all. It's Gavin Dorr from the AFL. Players milling around the ball. Real air of expectancy here at Football Park. This is Richie Ditch football now from now on till eternity. AFL football. Players go after the ball. Scott Lee making the charge, but well picked up by Alan Izard. Manages to hand the ball out of bounds. So it's a throw in on the outer side centre wing. there was interest in this game here in Adelaide but we didn't expect interest like this there must be at least 35,000 people in at the ground now and still trying to get in ball driven forward again Lindner again almost the second mark but again cleared by the Bombers Kieran Spawn sporting a new haircut and a wife they tell me gets around his opponent fairly comfortably drives the ball long now over centre half forward big leak from behind Romy Negri can't complete the mark, ball goes to ground, picked up by Gavin Wanganin, the former Port Adelaide player, handballed away by the Crows. And good defence by the Crows, now McGuinness will clean up and go outside the half-back line, and he streams away. Excellent player, Tony McGuinness, one of the first players the Crows went for, Crows went for. good mark to Simon Madden over the top. And again, the Bombers looking to set something up, and work the ball well through defence. Michael Long, superstar in his first year in AFL football. Doesn't deliver that ball too well, cut out by Lynn though. Could go for holding the ball, no, but there should be a free kick for Lindsay. No, the umpire's let the play go. Goes in full flight, straight at the big uprights, and there's the first goal of the match to the LA Crows. And they're looking pretty good. Goal came from Bradley Fulke, former McGarry medalist here with the West Adelaide side, and making his mark in the opening minutes. We've played four minutes and one second. The Crows are 1 1. The Bombers yet to make an impression on the scoreboard. Lovely passage of play. Crows turning defence into offence. To use a basketball term, which we shouldn't do. Handball was from John Kluge to Filke, and he made no mistake. So everything about this game tonight is going to be history. It will be Negri against Salmon. Umpire Dahl moves in to bounce the ball. Negri won the first tap and wins the second. Bruce Lindsay playing in the middle up by Stephen Schwert up from his half-back line drives the ball long ball needs to set it a lovely thump forward from Filkey again but the Essendon players read the ball superbly taken away by Dean Bailey now not a good kick finds Andrew Underwood another former South Australia and drives the ball long to Salmon oh good position but can't complete the mark Salmon good backing up but the ball should come to Shane Radbone another South Australian there's a few out there but a good mark in defence to Nigel Smart. A superb player, Nigel Smart, really came of age last year when playing for South Adelaide. Again, one of the first signed up by the Crows. Pack forms Izard first to the ball. So often he is. Good handball to Gary O'Donnell. Sets the ball up forward. Danaher can't complete the mark. And the Crows going in pretty hard here. They've been told over and over by the coach, Coach Corns, that it'll be hard football all year long. They're taking his warning and they're going in pretty hard. 
with Considine. He feels that bump. Good lineup on the interchange bench for the Bombers as well. Playing five interchange players tonight. Again, the Bombers trying to get something forward, but the tackling by the Crows is relatively fierce, let me tell you. Hamilton can't get the kick forward. And again, the Crows come away. This will be Matthew Kelly again. Handball to McGuinness. He's been in everything early. Goes over to Bruce Lindsay and the crowd yells Bruce, a real favourite here at Football Park. Now Jarman, let's see what he's made of. He has great skills, shows them there, gets the handball to Lindner. Lindner another handball, handball's wide of Lindsay and comes straight to Underwood. And Underwood again goes across the half, the centre line. Picks out his player in Wanganeen, I beg your pardon, Somerville. Redbone now, only small but very quick and he is hit very hard by Romano Negri. And players letting the tensions get to them early. And I tell you what, that was a hell of a bump from Romano Negri. Certainly nothing untoward about it. And he and Somerville, well, they're standing eye to eye, but they certainly don't feel eye to eye or see eye to eye. And Shane Redbone, well, he's playing his first AFL game. Of course, played for the Sturt Club here in Adelaide. A real nip and tuck little player. When he's hot, he's very hot. Redbone's going to get a free kick, well, I'm not sure that I agree with that, Don Scott wouldn't, he'd like some hard and tough. Redbone is going to have a shot for goal, and this is Essendon's first real shot for goal. Well, last year he would have been cheered by half of the crowd, tonight he's cheered by no one, Negri's in the square. Attempted kick off the ground by the Crows, not successful, but they do clear the ball, a tremendous mark. Kieran Spawn again just turns on his right foot and sends the ball in long. Gee, they look for Salmon up forward, ball punched from behind. Comes to Alan Bartlett, gets the kick away outside half back. Real race on now. Hamilton first to the ball, good grab. Nice schools, Paul Hamilton. And don't you know, you always put the mocker on him and the ball forced out. Redbone still looking a, worse for, a little worse for wear. A real interested crowd here at Football Park been a fierce opening by both teams but you have to admire the way the Crows have gone in I really want to show something with a 35,000 if not 40,000 people McGuinness again takes the handball a real give and go by McGuinness runs away from Gary O'Donnell sends the ball up across the wing Daryl Hart can't get his first touch the ball goes out of bounds well some of the Crows really standing out early on McGuinness one in particular Looks like Kevin Sheedy might be making moves already. He said earlier today that he had some players he wanted to test out. Well, he's got a few on the bench, some good juniors. Hart trapped with the ball, that should be holding the ball. That's the AFL rule, that's the way they'll play it all year. So Darrell Hart gives away a free early on. And the kick taken by Danaher. Sends it in long, pack forms. Free kick to Essendon. Peter Somerville, well he's been in it early too regarded as a very good junior Peter Somerville at one stage was said he may come to Adelaide when he wasn't getting a lot of time with the Essendon side as the mark is taken up full by Paul Salmon and he's a hard man to stop for any backman in the AFL superb player serious knee injury came back Warhurst very much thinner Tom Warhurst than we're used to pretty good interchange bench for the Crows as well Smith, Hocking, Micken good experience with the Brisbane Bears as we watch Paul Salmon from 45 metres, 45 degree angle, puts the ball in, we're used to him kicking goals, no mistake. So the Bombers get their first score on the board, Paul Salmon gets his first, and it's Essendon one goal, they trail the Crows 1-1. Salmon such an important part, such an important part of the Bombers, and that was a good build up by Essendon Max. see an interchange move being made now by uh, Kevin Sheedy and O'Brien for the Bombers coming onto the ground. Thanks very much Max. Centre bounce again. It'll be Negri against Madden. Negri's won the first two and makes it three out of three. Almost called round the neck to the Crows. Jarman throws the ball out but it's Danaher. Beautiful skills. Gets on the right boot and sends it out. With a good mark in defence to Stephen Schwert. Very underrated player is Stephen Schwert. Over the Bulldogs gets to Filky now. Filky sends the ball in, but not a good kick. Should bounce just inside the boundary line. Not kept in control by John Klug. And so we'll have a throw in. About 35 metres out from goal. Right full forward pocket. So 
if you look for positions that Adelaide have won so far, you'd have to say they've won the rucks. Essendon just starting to gain their feet. Of course, the Crows have been in serious training for at least three months. Serious certainly by Adelaide standards, probably nothing by Melbourne standards as the ball comes in. Mark not completed by Hodges, but he's good on the ground. He fights with Tony Danaher for the ball. And they call a truce there. Hodges playing his first game for the trial for the Crows. In fact, I beg your pardon, it's his second game. Played his first trial last week on the day he sorted out his contractual problems. Handball out to Lindsay. Lindsay can't pick it up. Players going in pretty hard. You've got to remember this is the 1st of February. She's about 30 degrees. Good defence now by the Bombers. Move the ball out. says the umpire so it's a pros free kick and it'll be Rodney Maynard from centre wing he sends the ball in again across the half forward line and a good grab by John Kluber gets absolutely crunched by three bombers and could nearly have gone for holding the ball but the umpires ruled he made an attempt to get rid of it and so we'll have a ball up Graham Corns in the stand and he'd be a fairly nervous man he said to us earlier that he wasn't nervous yesterday but the longer today has gone on he admitted to a lot of nervous tension and a big occasion for him it must be a difficult task for a coach coming into his first season, let alone coming into his first season with a new club. Lindner again, he's had a packet full of kicks already. Sends the ball into Daryl Hart. Always finds position, Daryl Hart. And he has the opportunity to put the Crows' second goal on the board. He'll be kicking from about 30, 35 metres out. Not much of an angle, perhaps 60 degrees. Not too hard for a man of Daryl Hart's capabilities. Was a hot McGarry medal favourite last year in the local competition here in Adelaide but was beaten on the buzzer and in fact beaten by his full forward here tonight Scott Hodges and hits the post so the Crows another chance gone begging one goal two they lead by two points the Crow rather Daryl Hart and the Crows wouldn't be happy with that attempt at all and Essendon wastes no time bring the ball out Paul Hamilton goes one way then moves the ball straight down the centre of the ground looks for Danaher Danaher's been good early won't be playing the first 11 games in the AFL season proper due to his suspension in the AFL Grand Final against Collingwood. Danaher, a great player. In fact, the Danaher family, superb players, and what a history they've had. Not quite the greatest player Essendon's ever had, Simon Madden. And where that goes, who haven't played the most games for the Bombers, Kevin Sheedy sitting in the stands. And Sheedy, a man who has always respected the Adelaide football talent, as the Crows go forward again, Jarman, can he get one? No, well done by the full back there. And Tony Danaher, the kick was good, but just not high enough. And Danaher, the perfect backman. Just fingers through, couldn't complete the mark, but did the next best thing. So the third point on the board for the Crows, 1-3. It's just one goal. Danaher goes short to Andrew Underwood. And isn't it good to see him back after a serious knee injury last year? Underwood would be really hoping to get a good year away with the Bombers. Nigel Smart, the handball to Bruce Lindsay. Lindsay will look for a player, always does, goes to the centre of the ground, and there's his pinpoint precision, goes to Kelly. Not good disposal by the Crows there, but picked up by Kelly again. Now the umpire's given a free kick to Stephen Schwert. So Schwert gets the chance to make amends for his mistake, sends the ball over centre half forward. Klug in front spot, the ball knocked away from behind. Negri should take it on his chest and settle play down. No, he goes quick to Jarman. Now Kelly again, getting good touches. Gee, he's only a boy, but he looks for goods. Was he fouled after disposal? Hodges' first kick and well dragged down from behind by Danaher. That really is going to be a tremendous battle up forward between Scott Hodges and Tony Danaher. Honours fairly even, perhaps just a touch in, in Danaher's favour at this moment. Spoiled Hodges on a couple of occasions. Throw in from the side. Madden gets front spot. McGuinness, gee, he's everywhere tonight. Puts the ball into the square. Klug again, ball comes to ground, Filke not holding the man, no, Jarman goes through a web, gets the handball across to Klug, doesn't miss from there, puts that through and John Klug has his first, the Crows have their second and they march away to three the Crows to the Bombers, one goal, and doesn't this crowd here at Football Park love it? Gee, I tell you what, there is absolutely not too many seats left. So a lot of people who are down on Westlakes Boulevard are going to be very disappointed. We must be hitting the 40,000 people mark now. 
And a lot of people are going to be turned away. Have a look at that. Every colour you like. Perfect balmy Adelaide summer night. February the 1st. We're watching cricket and tennis in Perth. And we're watching football in Adelaide. And at least 40,000 have come out to watch Gavendor put it down. As a result of Adelaide's second goal. And a good defensive mark. And it goes. Alan Bartlett, a good tough player. She was one of the positions that was really up for grabs in this pro side so most of these crows there's 50 players who are after spots there's not too many spots who are available for that first game against geelong Izard gets the kick forward should come to kelly again no well read peter somerville he's had a few good touches to lately puts the ball well out in front of david flood that had something of a patchy career with the bombers good defense again by the crows they're playing well smart gets the kick away not a good kick spawn should be the first player there in fact it's craig o'brien as Max said, had just come onto the ground and couldn't do much with his first touch and lets the ball goes over the go over the boundary. Rose interchange bench, as we said, Smith, Micken, Stephen Rowe. No one can really win that touch. Good handball to Bruce Lindsay. Lindsay's away. Now Crow's going a little backwards looking for the best option. Now Lindsay takes it again and sends the ball forward over the half forward line. And was Lindsay hit after disposing? Yes, he was. That'll be a Crow's for free kick about 55 meters out and Bruce Linder to take the kick on a very acute angle at his very best he'd make the, the distance we saw it at the Sydney cricket ground where he kicked that monster goal and he's done it again what a tremendous goal from Bruce Linder well he's just belted it in no one back there except an Essendon defender and it went sailing over his head so Linder gets his goal pros get three and it's 3 3 21 to Essendon, one goal. Daryl Hart going over to congratulate Linda on a tremendous kick from outside the 50 metre line. She'd be delighted with that. And I think Graham Corns would be fairly happy. He said to me just before the game, all he wanted was a total commitment. And what he's getting at the moment is a total commitment and a pretty good score on the scoreboard. 3-3 to one goal. Crows in front. Not fooled by the Bombers. But Nigel Smart, again, most of these players playing pretty well. In fact, there doesn't look to be too many passengers out there for the Crows. Stephen Schwert, again, another player. John Klug, having telling touches, sends the ball in, but not a good kick on this occasion. Underwood takes the mark just on the half-back line. He'll go long. Essendon falling down across that centre-half forward line. Big fly from Somerville. He gets into his opponent's back, so it'll be a Crows free kick on the half-back line. Bartlett to get another touch. No, in fact, the umpire changes his mind, gives it to Rodney Maynard. And Maynard, Marshall now, he always does something with the ball, gives it to a former teammate in McGuinness. McGuinness goes forward. They look for Linda and Klug. Ball comes to ground, out of bounds, just inside the 50-metre line. Grandstand side, full pocket for the Crows. John Klug, winning centre-half forward at the moment, playing pretty well. Up against Salmon, Salmon wins the tap. There's no rover who can win possession, so ball goes out of bounds again, and we'll have another throw in. Shane Redbone, well, he seems to have recovered from the knock he took from Romy Negri. Redbone looks okay now. Well, Salmon could have got a free kick. Kluge got right in his back there. John Kluge lucky on that occasion, but there for the treble, then we'll have another throw in. About 10 metres around from the 50 metre line, outside. Half forward line for the Crows. Marshall can't get the ball around. Well smothered off the boot by Andrew Underwood. And now we go for four out of four. Underwood certainly looks fairly fit. Seems to have recovered from that knee reconstruction that he had. And Coach Kevin Cheetah would be looking for a good year from him. Salmon doing the ruck work now. Simon Madden resting at full forward. Bombers go forward. Green ball the kick. Maynard again to the defence. The defenders from the post standing up pretty well under this pressure. They're going to get it week in, week out, and that's the real question with the Crows, whether they can sustain it. Most people think they'll be competitive. They're showing more than competitiveness right now. Daryl Hart, the handball is good from McGuinness, Jarman Hart, and a lovely lead. So Scott Hodges, well, the umpire will bring the Essendon defender back. He's got to come back inside the 50 metre line. Scott Hodges will need his very best kick, but he's dead in front. He's not by tradition a long kick but he is an accurate kick and I don't want to put the mockers on him but he certainly must be short of the gallop but he puts the ball in long he puts it in straight and the Crows are flying at the moment 4-3 27 to the Bombers one straight 
kick, six points. And the scoreboard attendant, well, he's excited, but he's got the score up there now. Well, Max Stevens, this is a great start by the Crows. Certainly is, Andrew, but down here we've just seen Tony McGuinness come off the ground. And little Eddie Hocking, number eight for the Adelaide Crows, go on. We'll just have to check what the situation is with Tony. But I'd say at this stage, Graham Corns is deciding to give him a bit of a rest for the efforts he's put in so far. Well, Max, he's made a hell of an impact so far. Jarman takes the tap away. Negri wins another tap. Hodges wins front spot, but Danaher too clever. Time to world. Got something of a punch away. Ball comes to ground now. Players battling to get that ball. Michael Long, the handball now to Dean Bailey, oh and he gets hit by a murder of Crows and he will take the free kick, no in fact it's a Crows free kick, well didn't see that one, Matthew, Matthew Kelly plays on immediately looking for Hodges, Danaher best position, Tony Danaher now honours I suppose with Hodges last goal you'd have to say honours about even now, Hodges starting to get some telling touches, we wonder whether he is fit enough to see out a full game, a very warm night here in Adelaide players fly for that grab Matthew Kelly well he certainly surprised some of us who thought he might not be up to the standard just yet but he's showing every bit that he is and a free kick to the pro so they're making all their own luck Kelly sends the ball in long and straight looking for clue but a good grab no Essendon players spoil each other Spawn gets dragged off the ball O'Donnell sends the kick forward Nice mark by David Flood, he's looking for something downfield and must wait for players. Now a player jumps into the gap but he can't see him. And a 50 metre penalty, the first one we've seen awarded in 1991. And that's awarded by the South Australian umpire Mark Mackey. And it will put David Flood no more than 10 metres out. And he should put the Bombers second goal on the board. So Graham Corns wouldn't be happy with that lack of discipline shown by the Crows on this occasion. By Alan Bartlett. Bartlett won't be happy with that. He's played up the corns for many, many years, and he'll know who'll pop a roast in from the runner any minute. So the Crows give a cheap one away. No mistake by David Flood, puts it straight through the middle. Certainly not much of a cheer from the 40,000 people here at Football Park. They all count in AFL football. So 4 3 the score, 27. Two straight kicks, two straight goals for the Bombers, 12 points, 15 point margin in in favour of the Bombers. Max, Tony McGuinness, any news on him? Well, Tony McGuinness, Andrew, has just gone back onto the ground, just had a bit of a rest, but Daryl Hart has come off. So Hardy having a bit of a rest, as we said before, it would appear that Graham Corns is resting these guys at the moment. Well, Daryl Hart straight on the phone, so I figure Graham Corns has had a few words to him. Ball driven forward by the Crows again. Mark not completed by Grant Filke. Yes, umpires decided to pay that. Well, he's under some pressure from Michael Long. So Filke sends the ball in long, no, looks for the lead from Hodges, got away from Danaher, Hodges, Danaher spores well from behind, long, pulled off the ball, no free kick, in fact, yes, there is, free kick now paid by Mackey, long straight onto the left foot, and sends it to Andrew Underwood, Andrew Underwood straight down the middle, almost stuffed off the boot, but gets the kick away, Madden flicks over the head, again, David Flood, can he kick his second goal in as many minutes? No, good pressure put on him by the Crow defender. Scott Lee battling hard. No one can get the ball clear, and so umpire Gavin Dorr moves in and says, that's mine, thank you very much. And will bounce. About 10 metres out from the Bombers' goal. The Bombers looking a little more settled now. Directly in front, and they'll be looking to win this ruck. They've been beaten in the ruck so far, and they've been beaten again as Negri gets that tap away to Eddie Hocking. His handball wasn't good, went straight to Gary O'Donnell. And O'Donnell may well get a free kick. No, door, umpire door decides I'll bounce that. That one's mine. Gee, not a seat spare really in this big stadium here. Holds about 55,000. And I've got a feeling that's going to be the normal year. Filkey again, he's getting a packet of kicks. John Klug, he's doing pretty well as well. He'll look for a player, but the quarter time siren goes. A very entertaining quarter by both teams. And a good quarter in particular for the Crows on the scoreboard. They lead 4-3-27 to two goals, 12 by the Bombers.
Who did we have? We had Charmin got one. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to now take the opportunity to let you hear the first public broadcast of the Henry Crow's theme song for 1991. We're the Crow, written by Mark Rivet and sung by Wayne Eldridge. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to to football park on a tremendous night of football here well the players just coming out of quarter time gatherings now max stevens we'd be pretty interested to know what graham corns had to tell them well graham corns has just said that he's very pleased with the way the uh, adelaide crows are attacking the ball and the way they're really giving it a dip in this trial game however he has made quite a few complaints to the players about the umpiring and he said don't worry about that just keep going the way you're going because at this stage coach Graham Corns is pretty pleased. Now Kevin Sheedy he's given his players a real roast he's told them that he wants them to use the power and the force that Adelaide's using. So what about those conditions down there have they changed much since we started the game? No Andy uh, we had a look at the meter before 25.5 degrees conditions here excellent in football park as per usual the surface here well one couldn't ask for a better surface and I think the boys from Essendon compared with some of the surfaces they've played on particularly in the winter months they'd be more than pleased. All right thanks very much to Max Stevens play is just about to commence we'll take a break and then we'll be back with the centre bounce.
umpire Gavin Dore about to get the second quarter underway. It sees the Crows leading 4 3 27. The Essendon, two straight kicks, two goals, 12 points. The Salmon gets the first knock away that the Bombers have won in the centre square. And as Kevin Sheedy said during that quarter time break, he really wanted some power from his Bombers. They haven't shown too much forward so far. David Flood getting a goal from a 50 metre penalty and the other one from the boot of Paul Salmon. And that Salmon in your picture now as he sends the Bombers up forward. Good pack forms, the ball knocked away from the Crows. Gee, they've defended well tonight. But again, some of them tries to break through the pack, but again, the Crows have really put their bodies in tonight as Jarman sends them forward over the centre line. Salmon again, the free kick given away to the Crows as the Bombers stream into defence, but Eddie Hocking will get the kick away and goes long, looking for Hodges, gets away from Danaher, and almost completes the mark. Hodges best on the ground. Now he looks for another player, can't get the ball away. Goes in there hard and... Looks like a free kick will go to Tony Danaher as we welcome a new commentator to the bench here and Bruce McAvaney. Bruce, nice to have you along. Gee, I'm nervous, Andrew. Underwood to centre wing. What a great start by the Crows. 27 to 12. Almost a full house here. Great night for it. And everybody must be delighted with the turn-up. As good as a grand final, Millie. Certainly the Crows were expecting to show something in the first quarter we didn't know just how well Bruce but they've shown everything 4-3 two goals three in front Jim Negri started at two in the ruck he's been terrific they had to take Madden off him early and uh, bring Salmon out and they've done very very well here's Underwood from the centre wing to half forward looking for Considine's got him he's 60 metres out one bounce tries to draw the player goes short looks for Salmon and gets him at centre half forward about uh, 30 metres out very good eyes from Paul Considine. Saw his player. In fact, Salmon had... Uh, in fact, it's not Paul Salmon at all, it's Simon Madden. He had Shane Radbone sitting in the square with no one within Cooey of him. Salmon did the percentage thing, took the mark, and will go back. Pretty good kick for goal from this distance. And should give the Bombers their third. Much of a cheer for him from the Adelaide crowd as the Bombers get their third. Simon Madden gets his first. So three goals to the Bombers, but they still trail the Crows on 4-3-27. One of the real veterans in the AFL, VFL, Madden's got a chance of breaking Michael Tuck's record. He's up around 360 and about uh, four years younger than Tuck, who broke Bartlett's record last year and has been one of the all-time greats. Tony Antropus, uh, Tony Antropus is the other yeah, certainly is Antropus third in with a Bit of a painting on the arm, and he'd be fairly nervous when he comes on playing in front of his home crowd. Ball knocked forward by Underwood. Gee, Underwood's impressed since coming back from injury. Lovely handball from the Bombers looking for... And David Flood gets the opportunity to post his second goal. About 30 metres out. Tremendous crowd, Bruce. I think this for a trial game. Absolutely brilliant. Well over 40,000. And... Uh, all goes well for the match against Geelong in a couple of weeks' time. Floats kick. Pretty good. It's a goal. Well, the Bombers come storming back. Shooty wanted some power. He's got it early on. So two very quick goals to the Bombers. David Flood has two. So he's done some useful things. So Shooty wouldn't have too many complaints with his game early on. He's been a borderline player for Essendon good enough to make their finals team last year. So Salmon one, Madden one, Flood two. Salmon in pitches, so it's four goals to 4-3, 27 to 24. Crows by three points on a perfect night. A wonderful stage that's been set here. Miss Bay O'Brien. Left foot by Grenville around his body, the half forward. Over the top uh, 44, who is Warhurst. Haven't seen him for a while. He used to play for Lord in the old days. And for him out too. Here, Robert Thompson from the back pocket towards centre wing. Salmon with one hand. Bailey over the top. He's had a checking roll in the first quarter. McGuinness had a tremendous first 15 minutes. Hocking, who took McGuinness's place. Marshall, customary left foot. Two-sided play. Lindner, good uh, match there against Hamilton. Taken by Long with skill. And Long from half-back with a little one. Well, Grenvold again really coming into his own now. And he'll set the Bombers up again. They've started this quarter in superb form. He drives the ball forward. And the big fly from Somerville. Somerville's done some good things in this game. And he can send the Bombers even further forward. Madden calls for the ball. Now he sends it up for that player. No, he's got... Well, big fly. But Kieran Spore, gee, the, 
the hip and shoulder came in, Spawn read it well and got out of the way, ball comes to ground, Matthew Kelly, now it's Nigel Smart who take the free kick, and Smart a player that AFL fans are going to hear a lot of in this coming year. Stephen Schwert, another player in that category. Now David Marshall. He's got a player running for him. It elects to go long. He's looking for Hodges, and that's a, a tremendous battle we're seeing between Hodges and Danaher. Ball comes to ground. Maynard off the ground and belts it through for the Crows' fifth. So Rodney Maynard started the game in the half-back line. It is now up forward, and he's done a lot of that for Norwood, starting his football in the half-back line. It is something of a goal sneak. A good player down on the farm. And a very committed player. So 5-3 the Crows and they lead the Bombers four straight goals. Mark Micken looks as though he's getting ready to come in. Ross Micken waiting to clear his contractual obligations with Brisbane Bears. Not sure if that's been completed yet. It seems it may well have done. Seems to be no problem with him lining up for the Crows tonight. Well, the crowd just about levelled out now. I think as many who are coming are here. And what a bumper crowd it is. Salmon from the centre. Ian Negri having a good duel, just as far as centre half back, Maynard, he just kicked the fifth goal for the Crows, looks for Negri, he can probably come on in place of him, he's done a wonderful job so far, Schwert with a little one to Jarman, his skills have been evident, Klug to Marshall from half forward, Hodges, missed him on, good play by Morris, he's been very impressive, didn't see him at all in the AFL last year, wide for a... Terry Danaher, who we won't see for a long time this season. Anthony Danaher missed the body. Well done, Hocking. Rode the bump. Grenville on the up court. Gone. Play on. Quick handball by Underwood. Didn't go very far. Jarman's hands again good. Round the body by Smart to centre half forward. And easy for Salmon at centre half back. So it's 33 to 24. The Crows by nine points. Well, the Bombers are under pressure here. The Crows are going in hard and they're going in fierce and they're going in in numbers. What's most important? Well taken by Warhurst. The running handball to McGuinness has been lightning. A little past the limb that quietened down a little since the first quarter, but gets the opportunity here to put his second on the board. Saw a dazzling kick for goal from him in the first quarter. Noticed no one in the square, let one of his kicks fly, and of course we saw that famous kick of his. Must have been all of 70, 75 metres from the middle of the centre square in Sydney. No, it's not a big ground, but still one hell of a kick. And now has the opportunity to post his second. About 35 metres out. Normally a good kick for goal. Umpire starts to move. That's not a good kick from Bruce Lynn. They won't be happy with that. So he puts the fourth point on the board for the Crows. 5-4, 34, 10 points clear of the Bombers on four straight kicks. Missed chance by Lindner. Nice reliable kick from uh, 30 to 40 metres out. Danaher short to his brother, so Anthony to Terry at centre half back. 11 week suspension in the grand final. Centre wing. Spawn, who's blonded the hair nicely during the summer. Hamilton. Still Hamilton. Could be with him. And it'll be a throw in on centre wing. 10 points in it. Hamilton, one of the stoppers in the AFL. He's been given some big jobs for Essendon over the years. He's picked up Dacos a few times with O'Donnell. They had some shared there. He tried ground a couple of times. Hopkins handball. Look for Filky. Well done, Long. McGuinness. Bailey off the ground, hopping, long, played long, excellent footy to Underwood, Underwood the give to Ezard, Ezard from centre wing, got caught, but got a little chip away towards centre half forward, Somerville crushed, O'Donnell crushed by Lindsay, but he rode the bump brilliantly, on the up, well done flat, Hamble not all that good, gives Wayne Deneen a chance from centre half forward with pace, trying to run him down is uh, Filky, missed the bump, Official attendance 45,000 as Lee to kick the ball for the Crows from centre half back. So Scott Lee sends the Crows into attack, looks for Nigel Smart and picks him out. Pinpoint. The handball is on the hockey. The best man on the training track for the Crows. He looks for Hodges. Hodges has got away from Danaher. If he can pick it up, he's got a paddock. No, he puts it on the boot and just pops it in for the point. He could have done more with that. He couldn't have quite pick the ball up. He had a paddock to run in if he got away. Well, he did get away, but great hustle from Michael Long. Ran him down and put pressure on the kick. So the fifth point on the board for the Adelaide Crows. They moved to 5-5-35. Five, five, 11 points in front. We expect big kicks in from Tony Danaher. 
we've seen them for years and years and he's let fly again straight down the center of the ground looking for Hamilton Hamilton flies but can't pick it up Underwood and Hocking to battle at that Hocking wins out the handball to McGuinness gee hasn't he shown some skills already we knew he had them clue now a number of touches for him sends the ball in forward Hodges over the top two against one recovers best again and gets pummeled over the line so it'll be a ball up in the forward pocket for the players Okay, Mikanon, Negri off, Negri's done the job so far for the Crows. Long in the pocket. Quick kick away by Morrish, like the look of him. Well taken there by uh, Thompson. Not a good kick, free kick for Bombers. That's in a half back and will go to uh, the big man in centre. Love to play him at full four all the time, but uh, with Madden waning with years, Salmon now committed on the ball, and some of them still not quite there. 50 metre penalty against the Crows for interference, so uh, Terry Danaher will come right up towards centre half forward. 35 to 24, official attendance over 45,000 people. Danaher chips at the Madden, and uh, not too easy there. Yes. Poor effort by Barton. Yeah, strong mark to Simon Madden. He really can't let your opponent get that far away. And Bartlett just couldn't get the fist to the ball. So Madden has the opportunity to post his second goal. There's one. And will line up from about 50, 48 metres out. Breeze against him, but only a slight breeze, as Max Stevens said earlier. About a four or five knot breeze he kicks into. Beautiful kick from Simon Madden. Just offline, though. Just fades at the last moment. So the first minor score on the board for the Bombers, and they trail by 10 points. 5-5 to 4-1. As Bruce said, it's 45,000 people. Believe it or not, it's a trial match. As the kick comes in from the Crows from Stephen Schwert. And McGuinness again. Gee, he's showing us some great football. Gee, if he maintains this form all year, won't he be a great player? And so has Andrew Underwood. Tremendous start to the year for him. He'd certainly look hoping to get a much longer season out of this year than he has in the previous season for the AFL. Free kick, perhaps a little soft for the Bombers that one. But it counts all the same to Gary O'Donnell who sends them forward. It's Cowthorpe. Beg your pardon, David Cowthorpe sends the ball forward. But the kick is not good. Cleared by Mark Mickey. Lincoln with a big fly. Missed by Bailey. Taken by Hamilton. He's a good mopper upper. Terry Danaher. Finger tipper for the old fellow at half forward playing 12 and a half minutes so we're halfway through the second quarter Crows led by uh, 15 points a quarter time they're 10 points in front Madden wants it long Danaher with a torpedo to the goal square Madden will take a flight at the back interferes uh, badly with his opponent should have given a free kick away Bartlett with a left footer filky has got it long late no free kick Fulky can't hang on to it These are some of the rules the local boys are going to have to get used to because there are no easy frees in AFL football. Nigel Smart can't control the ball, ball comes to ground. Essendon trying to push the ball clear. It comes to Matthew Kelly, been impressive, drives the ball long. Stephen Schwert caught under it. Eddie Hocking, been a good contest there, gets the handle out the clue, looking for someone, puts the Hodges a bit too far for him. But has he got the pace on the flat? It's a race into between Danaher and Hodges. Danaher with experience just pushes the ball out over the boundary line and it'll be a throw in 10 metres around from the point post but that has been a tremendous battle Bruce between Tony Danaher and Scott Hodges yes well Hodges uh, everyone in Victoria knows about him great performance in the grand final one of difficulties last year broke the goal kicking record and Anthony Danaher one of the really best of the fullbacks in the uh, AFL the ball comes to ground Hamilton no Danaher it is can't push the ball over ground Salmon does the easy thing kicks it off the ground long under pressure immediately and gets a free kick well the crowd here doesn't like it the umpire is much closer Michael Long takes the free so that's all that mattered. He's, matters he goes across the ground and O'Donnell on his own now has room goes for a run Bruce Lindsay runs him down he's got Grenbold if he wants him goes into the center of the ground and finds Considine Considine looking for help again Crow's coming down on him now he finally gets his kick away goes over the 50 meter line and picks out Grenbold in fact it's not David Grenbold yeah, yes it is <laughs> It is David Grenville. He is a bit shorter. He yeah, is a bit shorter. So I don't know that he's a great kick for goal, but we're about to find out. I don't know that he'll make the distance either. Kicking into the slight breeze. 
Bruce Lindsay stands the mark. Grenbold, a former Glenelg player, played with distinction here at the Bay. Doesn't put the ball in short. Two crows spoil each other, comes to ground. McGuinness does the smart thing, knocks it over the boundary line. And it'll be a throw in about 25 metres around from the Bombers' goals. Ten minutes left in this first half. Tony McGuinness, acting captain tonight. Had a wonderful season with Footscray, has been very successful. Youngest ever McGarry medalist in the early 80s, I think it was 82. McGuinness caught. And uh, all over the line with Wanganeen. About to get one of his few touches. There's Corns in the box looking on. He's worked uh, pretty hard. Well known in Victoria. Played uh, half a season with North Melbourne under Barassi and came back. Smarts takes the ball after a McGuinness handball. Sam, poor kick by Smart. O'Donnell over the top with Klug. Jarman was Norwich actually, not O'Donnell. A little bit of light. Klug's been pretty good. It's impressive. Jarman. Brother Darren will play for Hawthorne this year. Filky, ex McGarry medalist. Long with him. Filky looks for a free kick. Won't get it. Well played uh, by Spawn, but only as far as uh, number 40 who gets it to Clue. Clue to the forward pocket. Danaher, Long. He's playing as a stopper tonight. An unusual role. He's very disappointing in the finals when the pressure was on. And Morris from half back. Morris sends the ball over centre wing now. And the mark taken by Izzard. Been relatively quiet. Izzard got a couple of touches early, but sends the ball now down the centre of the ground. But in the middle, Mark Micken. Gee, and won't the Crows be happy if he can find some real good form to go along with Negri. Two Crows spoil each other. Hocking and Linda. Linda comes to back up there. Marshall that puts the tackle on Hamilton. Hamilton's got the job minding Linda. And done it pretty well as Underwood gets the kick away for the Bombers. Looks for Simon Madden. Still shows pace for an old fella. Moves around on the left foot. Drives a short pass into Danaher, completes the mark with class, and he'll line up. In fact, it's not Danaher, Flood. David Flood. So David Flood, the leading goal kicker for the Bombers so far in this game, has two. And he'll be looking for his third about. Kevin Sheedy there. He'd certainly be hoping that David Flood can add to his tally. Because the Bombers are down, and down by ten. So I don't know that Kevin Sheedy would be all that happy. There are something like eight players playing for the Bombers tonight who didn't... Who or rather not playing for the Bombers tonight, who played in last year's grand final as David Flood gets his third goal and the Bombers creep closer. Just four points in arrears now. As Kevin Sheedy said earlier today, he's looking to test some of these juniors out. We've got uh, number for 49, he's just coming for his... Yeah, uh, Paul Hills. Paul Hills, yeah. I'll try and work with this too. OK, 5-5-5-1. 35 to 31. 18 minutes into the second quarter. Micken against Salmon. Salmon easily. Danaher's playing pretty well. Court should have gone. Guard Smart gets a free kick in the centre. Gee, Danaher will be enjoying this tonight. He won't play for a lot of weeks after this. Schwert from uh, centre wing. Full forward. Hodges on a long lead. Out position by Anthony Danaher. He's done very well back there. Was caned by Brown in one of the finals last year. Kicked five goals in the first quarter and a bit on him. Considine with one hand. It's a poor handball by Hamilton. McGuinness and Hills. Underwood. He couldn't get a regular game last year and was lucky to get that free kick. He certainly was lucky. Crowd appealing to him for holding the ball, but umpires played in the back. To so Andrew Underwood. He's been a pretty good player for Essendon tonight. Most impressive. So he'll send them off the half back line. Goes across the centre of the ground. Big fly behind from Rodney Maynard. The quick handball from Matthew Kelly also been impressive. A little kick forward by the Crows. John Kluge has skills on at times. Looks as though he's in slow motion. Well, almost shoved out Scott Hodges, but Tony Danaher did it with class. Again, Hamilton looking to mop up. And he could get done for holding the ball. And it looks like the umpires pay that. <laughs> 45,000 boo. The umpire's decision will stand. And it's Mark Mackey, the South Australian umpire. There's certainly no prejudice there. Hamilton certainly agrees with the decision. Almost gave away a 50 metre penalty as Salmon comes in and pushes the ball over the boundary line. So it'll be a throw in. Full pocket for the Adelaide Crows. 10 metres round. Maxi C player coming injured off the ground there. Yes, Andy. Alan Bartlett has just come off the ground. He's done some damage there above his uh, left eye. It doesn't look too serious. And he's been replaced by Darren Smith. Graham Corns also putting uh, Daryl Hart back on, uh, back on the uh, ground for Bruce Lindsay. 
and Kevin Sheedy also making some changes. Paul Hills going on for Kieran Spawn and David Grenvold coming off for Craig O'Brien. Salmon, Kluge at the back. Filky. There's four points in it. Important four or five minutes coming up. The goal to either team here will be very handy before half time. Filky threw it away to Hocking. Hocking's hands are very good. Marshall from 50 metres. Nice kick, looks home. We don't know how to touch it. It's a goal. Well, isn't that the trait we've come to expect from David Marshall on that lovely right foot around the body? He knows where the goals are. And gee, hasn't he kicked a lot of goals from his wing over the years? Well, he's one of the veterans of the team, is David Marshall. But he is one of the classiest players in South Australian football. And he would be a real handy player to have in this Crows team this year. A lot of people surprised at his inclusion in this team tonight over the much younger and perhaps flashier Simon Tregenza. David Marshall has done every bit that he's been asked for tonight. Topped it off with his first goal. Wasn't it a good goal? To put the Crows now 10 points back in front, as Bruce said. Another goal just before half-time, all important. They got it, but Izard sends the Bombers forward and totally out-positioned was Nigel Smart by Terry Danaher. Danaher, his best kick would kick a goal here. He looks for someone in the pocket and picks out Alan Izard. So Izard has an opportunity to add a major for the Bombers. Certainly much closer, but the angle much more difficult. 6-5 to 5-1, 11 scoring shots to 6. So I have to say the Crows have had a little more of the play. But certainly they've had the advantage of being G'd on by this monster crowd. 45,000 as Izard lines up and lets it go. And he's got it. Looks good to the umpire. Four points to Alan Izard. His first goal of the game. And Essendon moved to 6-1. And more changes, Max. Yes, Kevin Sheedy trying everything at the moment, Andrew. Uh, Stephen Alessio just going onto the ground for Madden. He's come off having a rest, and he looked as though he could uh, do with a rest. Thanks for that, Max. No, it was good. I want to know a bit about Alessio. Max, tell me a bit about Alessio. Know anything about him? Yes, um, he started in Ballarat yes. and uh, played six games for the Ballarat United side before going and having a try with North Melbourne. Thank you very much, Max. I made that one up, Brucey, but you can <laughs> use it. Warhurst at the pocket, like it, Maxie. Uh, 41 to 37. Flood is kicked three. Well, he was a bit stiff. He was over He's the line. He's the roof. Have a look at the Look up the line. From the back pocket, Maynard to centre wing. Looks for Micken. Big fly by Danaher. Left foot by Kelly. Crew will take it. He's a good play this way. My word, he's been out of action for some 12 minutes. for Jarman. And Jarman hocking his goal if he wants him or Hodges. He should go the long way to Hodges. Got hocking on a lead. Over the top uh, 47, which is Morris. Poor kick by Jarman, really. He certainly didn't choose the best option. Hocking had a very big player right down his hammer. Hocking possibly, with in fact, is definitely the smallest player on the field. He's out on these yards feeling tall tonight. Uh, maybe Shane Redbone's about the same size. 6 5, 6 1, 41 to 37, two minutes remaining. Yes, Redbone, Hocking, Stevens, and Izard. All something in common tonight as the ball comes forward now to Essendon. Underwood again. G had numerous touches, takes a bump and takes it well. Izard gets chopped from behind and gives it a free kick will go his way. The punch not good from Scott Lee. Hasn't done too, too, too bad tonight, Scott Lee. Again, one of a number of good backmen. Poor checking by the Crows there, and that sends David Cowpaw, Calthorpe into goal. Well read on the goal line by Rodney Maynard. Classy number is Rodney Maynard. And lucky to get away with that kick to Mark Micken. Micken brings the Crows out of defence. Not a good kick, but should come to Matthew Kelly. Has impressed. Gets away from O'Donnell. And here's Jarman again. Can he do more with this? No, he can't get possession. It's Jarman and Long. Long should win out with pace. Good shepherding from Izard. Long picks out a player. Delivers pinpoint. And so David Calthorpe has also the opportunity to make amends. Goes in short looking for Danaher. But good work from Micken. Judged it best. And he'll clear for the Crows. To Smith. Lee. Sold the dummy but didn't get away with it. Calthorpe onto him. Smith again. This time it's uh, Thompson to half forward. Considine's had a few touches but a cut over the eye very early. Underwood tried to break the tackle. Couldn't hop him. Did very well. Good hands by the Bombers there. Underwood on the up. Free kick to Lindner in the centre. They get a goal here. The Crows will be handy. Four points in it. Half time, about a minute away. McGuinness will have to backtrack with pace. Sweeping handball into the centre. 
Maynard with a long one to the goal square. One out, Hodges versus Danaher. It'll bounce. Still bouncing off the ground by Krug. Danaher forces it through from behind. Well, an unlucky bounce for the Crows. Gee, the ball came in long. It was a lovely kick. The goal square was unattended. And the ball just didn't bounce the right way for the Crows. The crowd wishing that through eventually rushed through for the point and there is the half-time time here at Football Park an entertaining first half sees the Crows 6-6, 42 leading the Bombers 6-1, 37 Donnie, you're sweet, aren't you? Do you mind? I'll, co I'll come up in the last quarter for, for a bit It's a wonderful atmosphere, isn't it? What's it look like on the telly? What's, it, what's, what's the oval look like? Come up well? I'll talk to you later, Don.
Just get a message back to uh, SAS that we hope they're recording this because uh, Bruce wants an increased colour story for Sports World. That's all on some of this wave and crowd. Thank you. Unbelievable, isn't it? 
that six months ago no such thing as the Adelaide Crows didn't exist. But uh, in, I'll just say that Corns has shown his intentions early and he's banning the media from uh, listening to what he's got to say. Uh, yeah, um, what we'll do is um, on Monday we'll uh, get Andy. You can hear me, Andy? Yep. We'll get someone. He, it's, uh, the problem isn't with um, Cornsy, I think it's with um, uh, Curly. Neil Curley. But we'll just make something up anyway. Yeah, I might just go to Bill Sanders. Just say, look, this is the deal. It's that may be just the best option straight off. Just go through the AFL. AFL. Yeah, before, um, before the game, I went into the um, Crows room. And Curly kicked me out within about 30 seconds. I was talking to Kevin Egan from Essendon, Andy, and he cannot believe the crowd here. They said they've never um, played in a trial before such a crowd, and they believe that two more tiers should be built for the first game against Hawthorne in the opening round. <laughs> Yeah, can you increase the stadium straight away? Building starts on Monday, we're going right around. It's yeah. unbelievable, 45,000 people, can you believe that? His, 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 quote, his quote to me was, uh, Adelaide's not ready for AFL football. Yeah. And Max Bruce. You there, Budgie? Yeah, mate, speak up. Abernath is here, he's just played a half of football and he's injured. <laughs> oh, who? How are you, Max? I can't hear you, mate. Bruce, can you hear me? Yeah, just talk slowly. <laughs> oh, my God. It's just that this music's going and I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> so have you signed the contract now or not? So you still haven't signed, but agreed to play. It's good will, yeah, hey, this is good will. They're just saying, 45,000 people, the players aren't getting sent for this game. That's how it should be. Well, you're not worth it. Yeah. I mean, Bruce Weber just made Max Bashir a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, Alan Bartlett has had five stitches in his uh, eyebrow, just a cut above the um, left eye. <laughs> yeah, we'll do... We'll, hey? Well, they're, they're all still out on the ground, mate. No, he's, he's in the uh, dugout. It's next to Grantley Filky. Kluge. Kluge. Kluge actually did play a, a VFL game. Yep. Yep. Right, okay. Is it? 
And welcome back to Football Park. We're just about to get underway with the second half. Tremendous game so far. Max Stevens has been down in the rooms. Max, what have you got to report to us? Well, Kevin Sheedy has told his players that he expects Adelaide will run out of legs and all they have to do, the Bombers, is just keep pushing and pushing along. He claims that uh, Essendon is by far the fitter side out of the two at this time of the year. Now, Graham Corns has shown his intentions to the media pretty earlier. We, uh, pretty early rather, he wouldn't let us into the rooms to have a listen to uh, exactly what he had to say. But uh, we did hear him shouting at the players to just keep on pushing and he's quite pleased with the way they're performing at this early stage. Alan Bartlett for the Adelaide Crows has had five stitches. He came off in the second quarter, five stitches above the left eye and we understand that uh, he will be available to come back onto the ground if he is needed. There you see Alan Bartlett sitting next to Grantley Filkey. Bartlett's had a pretty good contest out there, playing centre-half back tonight. And as we said, no real favourite for that position. It's early in the year, perhaps Michael Murphy, perhaps Alan Bartlett. At the moment Bartlett on the bench. Nigel Smart looks to be lining up at centre-half back. Mano Negri had a tremendous first quarter. So much so that Kevin Sheedy had to move Simon Madden and change him with Paul Salmon. Simon Madden, a veteran. No one's played more games for Essendon than he. And he will lead off the ruck for Essendon to get the second half underway. 6-6 six, six, the Crows, Essendon 6-1. 42 plays, 37. 45,000 people here at Football Park. As we said, it's just a trial match. But umpire Mark Mackey puts the ball down and no one can get a clear fist away. Matthew Kelly had an enormous amount of touches, gets a handball to David Marshall. Good leap from behind by Michael Long, in fact backs up on John Clue. John Clue gets the ball to Stephen Schwert. Schwert, a good handball out. The Crows go forward, Hodges on a lead and grabs this one and doesn't let go. Danaher caught just one or two yards behind Hodges. Hodges has one goal so far for the Crows and will be lining up from about 45, make that 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Breeze died down a little. In fact, Breeze virtually non-effective here as Hodges moves in and puts the kick on its way. Drifting across the face of goal, punched out, goes to Grenvold. Grenvold gets it across the half-back line now. But again, Stephen Schwert, who has played pretty well here tonight, Schwert. He drives the Crows forward again. Well, Kevin Sheedy said that the Bombers are the fitter side. The Crows look the goods at the moment. Grenvold again, getting a number of touches now. Looks for Kieran Spawn. Right on his hammer is Matthew Kelly. Ball driven forward by the Bombers. Terry Danaher takes it. Sends the ball across into the centre. Now Gavin Wanganin. Been fairly quiet tonight but finds Alan Izard. Izard a very quick player, elusive player. Puts the ball to boot straight away. Great run from Gary O'Donnell. Runs into the space. Takes the mark dead out in front. So O'Donnell will shoot for goal from 30 metres out. Directly in front of goal. Rodney Maynard on the mark. O'Donnell hasn't kicked a goal yet. Bombers have six, so too the Crows. Gary O'Donnell, good player for the Bombers now over a number of years. Picture of concentration. I'm sure he is one of at least 30 Bombers who expected not a crowd like this. It must be fairly daunting for the Bombers, but it hasn't interrupted Gary O'Donnell's concentration as he puts the ball straight through the middle and boots Essendon's seventh goal. So for the first time tonight, the Bombers are in front and they're in front by the smallest margin. One point, 43 plays 42. And the Bombers kicking is what's kept them in touch so far. 7-1, Crows have had 12 shots and only managed 6-6. Mark Mackey about to bounce the ball. Romy Negri gets a new player in. Stephen Alicio, the Ruckman. He's a really tall player. Had six games at Ballarat. Not a good kick from Bruce Lynn there. Picked up easily by Hamilton. Drives the ball long, but high. Danaher, tremendous position. Gee, the Bombers are going to miss Danaher for the first 11 games while he serves out that suspension, but not letting him bother it bother him tonight. Somerville can't complete the mark. Kicked around the body by the Bombers. Also, Paul Hill's on the ground. New player, the blonde-haired, but the kick comes from O'Donnell. 
He's looking for Salmon. Good defensive position there by Matthew Kelly. Certainly one of the Crows' best tonight. Looks for Negri. Picks him out. Pinpoint on the chest. He's got the handball if he wants it. Stephen Schwert takes it and drives it into the centre of the ground. Hamilton misses what he should have taken. Now backs up. Hamilton had the job on Lindner and still on Lindner. Lindner gets the chance to get the handball away to Marshall. Good hands to McGuinness. McGuinness finds another player. And Schwert got cleared. I beg your pardon. And a poor shot for goal on his left foot from John Kluge. And one of the very few mistakes he's made tonight. Gee, he has impressed. The Bombers straight it. Get the ball straight back into play. Go to the wing, but not picked up there by the Bombers. Kicked off the ground by Hills. Now Izard backs up. Nigel Smart comes to meet here. Michael Long, good schools, pummels the ball out. And finds David Calthorpe. He in turn goes across to Ed Considine. Back to Calthorpe. Calthorpe gets the kick away. Read well off hands by Somerville, and in fact it's David Flood. Round the corner by Kieran Spawn. If it sits for Izzard, he's a Monty. It's going to sit for Sam and no, Good defensive work by Rodney Maynard. Pushes the ball towards the boundary line. And then butters up himself and just watches the ball dribble over the line. So 6-6 the Crows. They trail the Bombers 7-1. 43 to 42. Early in the second half. Negri against Salmon, quick kick by Lee to half-back, Marshall has done all right, Wanganeen, Alessio, Danaher, Smart, McGuinness who's been quite outstanding, third bounce, charges towards goal, Hodges, So Hodges from about 30 metres out. He's kicked one already. Been training, what, for a fortnight? Is that right? Yes, played his first trial week. game last week. Training just one week. Kicked five goals in his first trial the other day and said they said he was totally out of condition. Well, he looks pretty good. He's kicked that one. That's a seven. So it's 7-6 seven, to 7-1. Seven, the close by five points. Really has been an enthralling battle up forward for the Crows between Hodges and Danaher. They've both had their moments. Danaher read superbly on occasions. Hodges been leading well. The good thing about it, with players like McGuinness and Filkey and Lindner around him, he's being fed the ball. And the day that he marks them all, he's going to kick a bag. Lovely kick for goal is Scott Hodges. In fact, the only Port Adelaide player playing here tonight from the Premiership team. Negri against Alessio. Grimvold to Considine from the centre. Goes to half forward. He's hard the target. He's got some skills, the little fellow. Quick kick, Salmon with a chance, coming in very late. Somerville. Calthorpe, who I didn't see at all last year, don't know him at all, from centre half forward. Little one tried to find Salmon, didn't go very far. Well played uh, by Lee. Kick by Wanganeen. Smith. Still Smith from the back pocket. He's got a bit of time now and drop punts at the half back. Well, we said there only one Port Adelaide. There was only one Port player on the ground. Of course, Smith starting on the interchange bench and something he's not used to, and that's playing in the back lines. No more as a centre half forward. But John Kluge doing a masterful job there, and there he is on your screen with that grab. Great pair of hands is John Kluge. And if he stays fit, then he is going to bother a number of AFL sides. Another player there for the Crows, number 16, David Marshall, had to work hard to hold that ball in play. Did so fairly classy. Well pushed out, Eddie Hocking is giving away the free kick. He's got pace to beat Hamilton. He finds a player in Stephen Rowe, just under the ground. He want to get rid of it. Is he trapped holding the ball? No, he was tackled well by Long, but Kluge again. Lovely left footer, this boy, but offline. So he's had two chances in this opening third term, the opening of the third term. And he's put one out of bounds and one through for a point. So 7-6 now, the Crows 48, a five-point lead over the Bombers 7-1. Under with the target. Hills, who's also new for the Bombers. Centre wing, Spawn, with the blonde hair this year. Looks a bit like Anderson from the distance. And it'll be a ball up. 49-43, to 43, over 45,000 at Football Park tonight. Spawn, who was reported in the grand final for an altercation with Banks, which really excited that uh, brawl at quarter time. Danaher, who won't be playing for a number of weeks. Lindner on the up, McGuinness on his uh, right-hand side with pace. Bailey did very well. Clue 
Free kick to McGuinness and a comeback at centre wing. So the acting captain to get his uh, 18th kick. He's had 18 kicks and 11 handballs tonight. And not too many of them have gone astray, Bruce. Tony McGuinness, a real classy player here from South Australia. And isn't the crowd glad to have him back? Ball comes to ground now. Players battle for it. Kicked off the ground by the Bombers, but there he is again, McGuinness. Goes in long again, looking for Hodges. No, in fact, that one's to Clue. Clue, this will be a good mark. Eyes on the ball, all the basics. There was nothing Hamilton could do about that. And John Clue, one of the best for the pros tonight. He's not a long kick. He's not that far out. He'd be kicking from about 40 metres. Tough angle, the worst angle here at Football Park. Saw a magical goal in the grand final here from this pocket kick by Bruce Abernethy last year. First on the board, Clue drifts it back in, but it's only through for a point. So he's done most of the scoring for the Crows in this opening of the third term, but it's all behinds, two behinds to him, and still played an outstanding game. 50 to 43, 47, Morris getting ready to come on for the Bombers. Danaher a thumping kick at his best. That one he didn't really get onto, but he's kicked it about 70 metres right down the middle. Hamilton came off, thanks for that Donny, well done. Campbell by Rowe. Centre half forward Marshall. Who's that? Okay. Marshall from centre half forward to the goal square. Danaher getting back. And no pressure from Hodges there. Danaher takes him on, gets around him. Drop punt. Linda. Somerville late. Good mark, Linda. His reaction was more than what it needed. I don't think some of you got him. I think he threatened to. Then he took the free and the mark. Whatever the umpire decided to pay. Gavin Dore officiating from the AFL. And Mark Mackey hoping to join those AFL ranks. Linda, who need a big kick to kick it from there. He's got to be 60 metres out. Well, there's not much in the form of a lead. Romano Negri's in the square. Now he leads and Linda looks for him. Negri, the pilot, the target. And he's almost completed it. Ball comes to ground now. Michael Long starting to get his form back. Kicked off the ground, but straight to Stephen Schwert up from his back line. Schwert been a pretty good player tonight, an underrated player here in South Australia. Does all the basic things. But again, not known as a goal kicker. And this will be something of a thrill for him. I don't know that he's ever kicked a goal in front of 45,000 people. He puts in a nice left foot, and starts to drift away. In fact, won't make the distance. Falls in the square, comes to ground and knocked out of Bounds by Gary O'Donnell. Have you played in front of 45,000 times? No, not if you played for the Bulldogs. 50 to 43, 7 8 to 7 1. Alessio and the clue. Still clue. Missed by Considine off the ground. Handled by Thompson. Good uh, hands by Marshall. Missed by Kelly. Little left foot. Crushed as he went to kick it. Spawn. Long is playing as a defender and tagger tonight, which is a surprising role. Hocking did well against Spawn. And the Crows have done the job by bottling it up. A couple of chances here for Long and also for Spawn to get it away and they couldn't do it. So seven points in it, almost halfway through this uh, third quarter. Another goal here would be handy. Hart, it's been quiet. Row round his body. Blind kick, Hodges against Danaher. Jarman, he's very good in confined spaces. This is that, and uh, it'll be an Essendon kick. Ball out of bounds on the full from Andrew Jarman. So the Crows not making the most of their opportunities, but under good pressure from the Bombers. Michael Long starting to pick up plenty of touches now. Bruce Lindner stands the mark. Long, not a long kick. Underwood wants it short, but looks like Long's going to go longer. <laughs> looks for Alessio. Knocked from behind by Clue. Comes to Stephen Rowe ground for the first time in this third quarter Daryl Hart he's also back on the field and gets hammered by two bombers comes to Hocking he knows where the goals are that ball a little off target one-on-one -on -one, Danaher and Hodges neither can win out Hodges best to recover around the body but he too has missed and in fact he's put it out of bounds as well so chances going begging Bruce she's a good player though I mean, the only other full four that can recover like him is Dunstall he's got tremendous recovery what an exciting player he is and he's going to have uh, a huge impact on the AFL. Good mark. Excellent mark against uh, Somerville. It was a disappointment in the grand final last year on the interchange bench. 
strange shoot. He brought him on late in the second quarter. Negri towards full forward. Hodges the target. Danaher runs him under the ball. No free kick. O'Donnell on the up tries to get it to Underwood. Still O'Donnell. Little left footer. Rowe with a chance. He's panicked a bit when he's got the footy tonight. And he didn't get it that time. Grenvold to Spawn at half back. Spawn just chips a little one away. That's okay. Considine tries to draw Morris to him. Now Morris. He looks a bit like O'Donnell. Just a little taller. Left foot through centre. Not a good kick. And uh, Maynard should really have taken it. Smart throw. Not paid. Schwert with a little one. Marshall. It sits. He's got great skills. Sweeping handball to McGuinness. Hodges. Got him. Didn't take it. O'Donnell, no that's uh, Lindner, so O'Donnell along at half back, now look at this, he's got uh, Danaher and Hills, and uh, Danaher's going to get the footy. Stephen Schwert has played a good game, read that well, the Bombers had plenty of open spaces if they could set up the loose man. And player on the bench, oh, we can't really tell. I can't tell you who he is, but he's tied. Alessio against Negri. Little kick away from Craig O'Brien into the centre of the ground with pace Kieran Spawn, but he has to go the wrong way. Finds O'Donnell, O'Donnell over the top of Stephen Rowe. Stephen Rowe had a few scary moments here early. Crow should have made more from their last push forward, and it could result in a bomber's goal. One out, one for seven. Good reach, Salmon, and eventually he's paid the mark. And Tom Warhurst isn't happy with the decision. Salmon quite delighted. He'll take the kick. Virtually dead in front, 25 metres out, if that, make it 20. And he has the opportunity to bring the Bombers to within one point of the crowds. Magnificent shot of the moon covering here at Football Park down Westlakes Boulevard. Absolute picture of the ground, 45,000 fans here, not too many supporting the Bombers. But they would be thrilled with the display being put on by both teams. Salmon. Real good goal kicker, this man. A real important cog in the bomber machine. Walks in, two steps, puts it on the boot and puts it straight through the middle. So Paul Salmon has his second. Bombers move closer. Good kicking, the Bombers. 8-1-49. They trail the bomber, the Crows on 7-8-50. Two to Salmon, two to Izzard, three to Flood for Essendon. Hodges has got two for the Crows. Filky back on for uh, Adelaide. Next, uh, Gary Medlis. To the uh, VFL for one season with Collingwood. Yeah, so one year with Collingwood. Two. Negri versus Alessio. Yep. Yeah. Uh, McGuinness. Off the ground by Morris. Considine from centre wing. Smith at the back did pretty well there. Salmon looking for free kick. Doesn't get it. Thompson. Grenvold, time to steady. It's not a good kick, Grenvold, and that's not too good. Underneath it was Spawn. Missed uh, by O'Brien, who got a free kick there. Against Kelly. Craig O'Brien from centre half forward. So O'Brien caught high. Popped one around the head. So he'll get a good kick at the goals. He's pretty well dead in front. He's some distance out, about 40 metres. 45 he'll be kicking from. No breeze, if any, it helps him. O'Brien, nice looking kick, and then drifts off, and in fact goes through from behind. So the second behind to the Bombers, Tom Warhurst will get the ball back in for the Crows. 8-2 now, the Bombers scores a level, 7-8, 8-2. O'Brien won't be too happy with that kick. As Warhurst puts the ball in, it's got lead. It's got some room to move in. Puts the ball up to centre wing, Darren Smith should take that. Good strong mark, Darren Smith, the handball. Down ground to Maynard, Maynard sends the ball forward. Lindner, good use of the body, but played on, perhaps he shouldn't have, should have had a look, but is it going to dribble through my word? It is. And the Crows get one back, an important goal. But in fact, the umpire is pulling him back, no goal at all. Well, I didn't see the decision, so he must have turned with a push in the back. I thought it was good use of the body. Gavin Dorr didn't see it that way, and the free kick will go to Morris. Sends them forward, Maynard over the top. Could have given away the free kick and has done. So the free kick to some of them. It's a 
Ramsey's going to have forward. Tall side tonight, isn't they playing all their big men. Filky, well done to Jarman, but it's to your throw. Well, the hands were quick, but uh, he had his back to us, so he in perfect position under him. Sam on the target. It's got him. being made to pay for their mistakes just yeah. indiscretion by Lindner has cost them a goal and a throw may cost them another one he hooks it if it's just too far from him he always hooks for a shot like this but he can't slice it 8-3-7-8 Salmon has 2-2 two -two for the night now I'd be happy with that kick and again it'll be Warhurst brings it in quickly now Looks for Darren Smith. Showing a little bit of form early on in, in this third term. Smith in the back lines. Good hands from Spawn, but it should come to Marshall. Good courage there by the Bombers. Marshall can't pick the ball up. It goes out of bounds. Throw in centre wing outside. Football Park Boulevard. Tony Antrobus. Well, won't he get a buzz running onto what was once a pretty good ground for him. Had some good state football here, Tony Antrobus. Had a shocking run with injuries. Back of the play now. Bombers go forward again. He was just kicked a half forward, full kick against uh, O'Brien to Lee. Lee to Marshall. He was pretty late there. Just a little gift to Filky. Low in front of uh, Long. Smart. Hodges, good kick. crown for Michael Long just lying in the middle of the ground Look worse as I flash past lying there on his own not doing a lot of moving clue good hands to Filky good hands again to Hart had no player so had a shot himself and hit the post bad luck to Daryl Hart he levels the score with that kick 7-9-51 Bombers 8-3 also on 51 he's be looking to bring the ball in quickly Michael Long still on the ground with cramp I suspects that Cameron should have taken off be walking too well, in fact, tried to stand up and fell over again. Again from David Marshall, one on one again. Danaher throws it out the way, does that with class and goes for the percentage of the boundary line. Can't get it over there. Well kicked in by Daryl Hart. Now it's three on one, the Crows, if they can make something from it. Can they? They can't. Another point. So John Clue, well, he's having no luck at all. off the ground. I suspect nothing more than Cram Bruce. And an was to come home. So Anthony Danaher with the Crows having 17 shots to 11 leading by a point. Three and a half minutes remaining. Don these are just 25 minutes huh? yeah. Thanks mate. Danaher to half back Grinvold to O'Brien. Considine draws the player. Somerville at uh, centre wing. He's got flood short. Now he goes to Cowthorpe. Uh, Salmon will try and lead. Here's Antrobus. Very fresh. Salmon one out against Warhurst. Uh, well done that time, Warhurst. In the pocket. Spawn. Caught. Cowthorpe in the pocket. Quick kick goes nowhere in particular. Quick kick away by uh, Thompson to half back. Looking for Marshall or hoping for Marshall. Filky over the top. Wengen in with him, and uh, Essendon did well, they were outnumbered for a while and they held it up. So, so a ball up at centre-half forward for the Bombers. So what's the story with Long, Max? Well, Bruce, it's only severe cramp in his uh, left calf, and uh, the medical staff from Essendon working on it, and we would expect that he will take part uh, in a few minutes, be back on the ground. So, clue to row to centre half forward to Hodges. Well, Scott Hodges made no mistake with that one. Took it on the chest, went out on a long lead. The ball was good from Stephen Rowe. And Hodges lines up for his third. As we said, an enthralling battle between him and Danaher all night. They've both played well, 
Hodges won't make the distance with that kick. Goes to the square, rush through for a point. So the Crows continue to score, but certainly not majors. And he kicked the one goal in this term. They've added five points. 7-11 the Crows, they have a two-point lead over the Bombers. We've added two majors in this term. Kick off by Izard, the drop short. Good night by Grantley Fulke, he just turned around in time. And he can put the ball back in now. McGuinness ran into the space. Fulke didn't spot him. Fulke's going to have a shot, not a long kick. As we said, a good player is Grantley Fulke. He had some telling touches tonight. Gives it his best shot, but again, won't make the distance. Alessio tries to punch forward. Good defence, Izard now. Get, gets the Bombers out of trouble. Sends it back up to their centre-half back. Good mark. And away they go. Kieran Spawn on the run from Considine. Spawn, salmon the target at centre-half forward. Good mopping up there by uh, Kelly. Yeah. Kelly's drop punt. He'll kick the clue. to uh, help Danaher out. So Klug with a torpedo that uh, covers about 60 metres to the goal square. Hodges takes off early. Micken held it. Yeah. Well, has. Micken won't miss from here. He'll be dead in front two metres out. And he should extend the Crows' lead to eight points. They lead by two, 7-11 to 8-3. Micken stay behind the pack. All he has to do is put it over Alessio's head to get some close to the man of the mark. And kicks it out of the stadium, hits the back of the grandstand, and Mark Lickin will be pretty happy with that. Good grab, good skills, his first major. 8-11, 59 the Crows, 8-3, 51 the Bombers. So much ground. Did you play 20 minutes? Did you play 20 minutes? I think had a 12-minute last quarter. So a handy one for Micken and the Crows, 8-11, 8-3. Had some chances in this quarter. They should be three or four in front. Eight points of difference. The Alessio against uh, Micken. Siren will go any moment. And it does go there. And uh, three quarter time. The Crows lead by eight points. So 8-11. And Essendon, eight goals through. Donny, um, we don't get any effects through the headphones here. The, when we do the Geelong game, we will, won't we? Cameron Crowe's theme song with the Crowe, written by Mark Rivett and sung by Wayne Hildridge. Do you find that easy to work with? Yeah, you get, you get up, you've got to have one. Yeah, yeah. It's just pretty flat now. Yeah. What's the normal policy here? Um, no, we use effects, at, well, I mean, I don't know, for footy, I mean, we use effects at the basketball. So we should for footy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so confined and loud, I mean, it's great to get up in that. You know you're right, they should have been a lot further in front. The standard of footy slipped a bit there, of course. Yeah. Both teams. But they'd be wilting a bit, gee, it'd be tough out there. For tonight's news. Right. this song yeah. 
Sorry, don't move, just off cans. Right, yes, you're damn right about that. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. It should be interesting to experience it, just to see if it... Bruce was just saying it, having the crowd in your ears really gets you up. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Well, a full moon here at Football Park. We wonder whether it's going to put the mockers on the bombers. Max Stevens has had a listen to both coaches. Max? Well, Graeme Corns is having a little bit of trouble talking to his boys, Andy. The music here, the new Adelaide Crows song, was blaring, and um, he's had to ask for that to be turned down just a little so he can talk to the boys. Kevin Sheedy, well, he was on the uh, players' board trying to work out a few moves, but I spoke to uh, Kevin Egan, and Kevin Egan's word from Essendon is they cannot believe the crowd here. Uh, a crowd of around 45,000 and they said, uh, he said to me, if this is what the sides in Melbourne can in expect uh, here at Football Park, well, it's going to be hard for the sides coming over here. Well, Max, did Kevin Egan say how desperate he was for the Bombers to get up tonight? Well, Andy, he did say to me that uh, these games, trial games, as they are trial games, Essendon has come over here to win the game and they are trying and they they want to win the game. It's not just a practice for the coaching staff to make a few positional moves and see how guys go. As far as Essen are concerned, they desperately want to win this one. All right, thanks very much, Max Stevens. And there we see Kevin Sheedy. Well, he certainly does mean business. The players listening intently. Here it's Spawn there, Andrew Underwood, number two. David Calthorpe, number seven in your screen. Sheedy, well, they've only had 11 scoring shots, the Bombers, and they're only eight points down. So perhaps a little lucky to be so, or in fact it's just bad kicking by the Crows. Graham Corns, final instructions from him, asking for one more ditch effort. He knows just how important it is to keep the momentum going in this town, keep the Crows going. So I think even Graham Corns would be surprised to see 45,000 people here. I'm sure Kevin Sheedy has as he walks off the ground. So all in all, we're in for a great last quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be back with all the action. Don, that news thing you said, do they, they don't want a piece to camera, just, I don't, right, right. Okay, no problems. Don, Bruce is gone. I think he's coming on to see you.
football to go here on what's been an extraordinary night at Football Park here in Adelaide. 45,000 fans have watched a pretty close contest between the Crows, our first ever real look at them, and a team by the name of Essendon formed in 1897 and won a premiership in its very first game. It's won 12 since. It'll be a very short price favourite to win another one this year, the way it's been going. In fact, the way it's been going tonight, well, it's got some work to do. As the Crows go forward once again, 8-11 plays 8-3. Ball will be sent in by Daryl Hart, looks for a lead, it's Bruce Linder, oh he drops what he should have taken, now butters up, and the Crows have made some fundamental errors here, Linder tries to butter up, in fact it's David Marshall, and certainly Graham Corns and Bruce Linder would be most unhappy, absolute pinpoint pass, hit him on the chest and bounce straight away. Ball up by umpire Mark Mackey, looking for the handball, Marshall, we saw him kick a beauty before, can he do it again? Where he can, David Marshall's got two, and the Crows kick away. 45,000 people lift them to greater heights. Tremendous excitement here at Football Park. David Marshall, the handball was good from Daryl Hart. Marshall made no mistake, kicks a great run around the, a great goal around the corner. Always has done. Into his 30s now, but still a real good player. Got some pace and plenty of experience. He'll be enjoying it out there tonight, Marshall. So he has two, and Scott Hodges has two for the Crows. David Flood, the leading goal kicker for the Bombers with three. Paul Salmon has two. It's Negri against Alessio. Negri's ruck well tonight. Clue caught away from that one. Nice little handball to Hamilton back on the ground. Well, courage needed from Scott Lee. Maynard, the handball to Matthew Kelly. And a good player, quiet third quarter. Filky can't take the mark, Linda butters up to make up for a previous mistake, Marshall again, this time the left foot goes around the corner, it's a race between Hart, Rowe, the handball from Rowe was superb to Hart, can he kick it from there, he goes for goal, no, puts it in the square, Mark on the line, no, one crow up, one bomber down and the bomber pushes it through, we don't have a number 50 on our sheet so I can't tell you who it was, but just a behind to the Crows, 9-11, 9-12 now, the Crows... 15 points in front of the Bombers on 8-3. Kick out is good to Spawn. He has help from Hills. Hills goes long, but it's going to be cut out. Poor kick with Mark Rodney Maynard. Well, he would have impressed the Brains Trust tonight, Rodney Maynard. Klug is at the back. Good running from Bruce Lindner. There's some run in those legs. Hodges again. Good lead, good kick, Lindner. The Crows going right on with it here. If Hodges can put this one through, the Bombers have got it all in front of them. Danaher on the mark. Hodges going for his third. 30 metres out, 45 degree angle. He loves them there. But he won't get that one. Pushes it, hooks it through for a behind. So the Crows kicking let them down tonight. That's the 13th behind. 9-13, 67, 8-3, 51 the Bombers. Gary O'Donnell to bring the ball in for Essendon. Lovely screw punt. Gee, get some distance. Mark taken by the Bombers. Good mark too. David Flood hasn't been the Bombers' worst player. Not a good kick. Good mark though by Stephen Schwert. Likewise, hasn't been the worst player for the Crows. Looks for something up forward. Sees Lindner. But not in position. Bomber player Paul Morris in front. Gets the ball away. David Grenvold now, half-back flank for the Bombers, goes across centre. Good cut out now by the Crows, again. 42, Matthew Kelly played a good game. Stephen Schwert, body over the ball, gets it out to Kelly, should look for a player, has one in McGuinness, been a star. Hodges on the lead, second grab, no. Can't take the mark, butters up well, butters up extremely well, gets the kick around the body. Good pace found from Stephen Rowe. Goes out to the centre of the ground to Jarman. Super mark, Andrew Jarman. Will kick for goal from 15 metres out. No angle at all to speak of. Jarman, well, we haven't seen too much of him, but that was worth waiting for and that was worth seeing. An important kick for Darren Jarman. Andrew Jarman, I beg your pardon. Andrew Jarman, 15 metres out. Looking at his first. Crows need this. They've got it. Kicks their tents. And the Crows are flying. Crowd likes it. It's going to take them a long time to get home tonight, and they'll be talking about this game for some time. 
as Abernathy leaves the ground now. Most disappointed he had to play in the Bs. So Andrew Jarman, his first major. In fact, it's not. It's his second. Kicked one in the first quarter, now has two. It'll be Negri again against Alessio. Negri played a powerhouse game tonight. Done everything asked of him. If he can maintain his fitness, had some injury problems over the year. He is really going to give some Ruckman over in Victoria. A hell of a hurry on. And make that Sydney, Brisbane and Perth as well. The Bombers go long, looking for Salmon. Pushed out of it. David Calthorpe butters up. Can't get hands to the ball. And Gavin Dorr, our umpire from Melbourne here, says it's mine and I'll bounce it. Eddie Hocking. Well, he doesn't look to be enjoying it, but if the Crows get a win, I'm sure he will, but I'm sure he'd rather be out there. Did some good things. Kick around the corner. Looking for Schwert again. Schwert's got the, the yard on Hills. If he can pick it up, sees it over the line. Paul Hill stayed right on his hammer. Antrobus was there to help him out if the ball came back. But Schwert, well, he's looking tired, and so he should be. He's run pretty hard, had a shot for goal, but played most of the... Knight in the back lines. Negri, good position, holding on to Alessio now. And again, players starting to look tired. Play getting a little scam scrambly. Six and a half minutes gone, final term. So less than 20 minutes to go. The Crows lead by 22 points. No one would say that a trial game victory is that important, but it's certainly important to the Crows here in Adelaide. They needed a good showing at least. Almost good skills from Cowthorpe. Lovely handball to Antrobus. He likes them on the run. And he's put it straight through the middle. So he gets one back for the Bombers. Only their third in this half. Tony Antrobus is first. Former North Adelaide Rover. The Geary medalist. <laughs> she doesn't like the action too much. She's come here to see a Crows victory. However, the Bombers the creep a little closer. Antrobus gets his first. Started tonight's game on the interchange. Negri again, it'll be against Salmon now, who's been brought into the ruck. Mackey to put the ball down in the centre square. Negri gets the run at the ball, but Salmon wins the toss. Marshall the handball, Schwert off the ground. That little handball back to Schwert. Now Stephen Rowe getting some useful touches. Can Fulke pick it up? No, he can't. Yes, he can. Looking for someone to give it to. He's got McGuinness. Been in everything tonight. Dives on the ball, showing commitment. Somerville can't get the kick away. Now Craig O'Brien hasn't done a whole lot tonight. Big fly from David Calthorpe. Ball comes to Kieran Spawn, takes the eye off the ball at the crucial moment. Maynard in there to help out. And the Crows force a ball up. Matthew Kelly also in there. Mackie will ball it up. 73 plays 57. 45,000 people here at Football Park. Super night. And the people in town will talk about this for some time. Six months ago, no such thing as the Adelaide Crows. Didn't even want an Adelaide Crows. Good mark there, taken by Scott Lee. Has got better as the ga game's got longer. Sends the ball wide. Marshall's on his own and he's off. Has a player running in John Kluge. Has to get around one. Too slow, John Kluge. Gets absolutely collared by Danaher. In fact, it's Paul Salmon. So uh, opportunity goes begging for the Crows. Salmon, good eyes there. Picks out a little player in Ed Considine. Considine now on the left foot. Goes around the corner, but the kick is not good. Cut out by Robbie Thompson. Been a good player on his half-back line tonight. Kluge, can he make amends? No, he can't. Now butters up. Pushed out by the Bombers. David Grenville there. Gets possession. Gets around his own teammate. Now sends the ball over to centre wing. Big fly from behind by Maynard. Sends in long again. Kluge again. Good pair of hands, John Kluge. And he's got cramp to beat. Well, he really deserves to have cramp. Played a super game. And if they knew in Melbourne the sort of injuries this man has gone through. Gee, two years ago in a hospital bed, there was a thought that he would never, ever play football again. At one stage, may have lost a leg, in fact. And he has come out here tonight and absolutely brained him. Played at centre-half forward all night. Hasn't kicked a goal. It's the only thing he hasn't done and has an opportunity now. Kicked a few points, had opportunities. 
Kick won't make the distance, he'll make the square. Not much up front for the Crows, but pushed in the back. And Gavin Dore has seen that as plain as the nose on your face. Salmon knows, down on her nose, and walks away. Well, Salmon knows exactly what, he, what he's done. No need to push Scott Hodges on the angle. Well, in fact, Gavin Dore has put him on the angle, but Hodges sh should boot his third. And again, resurrect that bigger lead for the Crows. Bang, straight through the middle. Hodges doesn't miss too many from there. He's got three. And the Crows kick away again. 11 13, 79. They lead by 22 points. The Bombers back on 9 3. The most important thing about this now 24 scoring shots for the Crows and just 12 for the Bombers. Well, Kevin Sheedy, he wouldn't have been too happy when the Bombers got beaten by Brisbane last week in a trial match. Well, with just 15 minutes to go, make that 14. He may get beaten again, but still plenty of time for the Bombers to get up. Four quick goals will do it. But the Crows certainly don't seem to be running out of legs. Certainly we in Adelaide know of the fitness campaign they've been on. Four months of it. 13 days in every fortnight. But that tap won by Salmon goes straight to Andrew Underwood. But Darren Smith reads the play well, races the ball out of defence. Has Kelly, he's going to get caught. Another handball to Scott Lee. Now McGuinness, good hands from the pros. McGuinness goes long, but the kick should go down David Grenvold's throat. Good mark under pressure, David Grenvold. And he puts the ball back forward for the Bombers. Too many flyers for the Crows. It comes to Danaher, down the ground now. Sends in a booming kick to centre-half forward. Oh, well read. Well read by Robbie Thompson. But the kick is not as good as the play and puts it straight down Craig O'Brien's throat. No one on him. So again, he'll be looking to set something up for the Bombers. Goes over centre. Centre half forward now for the Bombers. Neither player can take the mark. Now Kieran Spawn. Well tackled by Kyle Fuki. Too slow, Kieran Spawn. And Fuki is off. The little kick to Daryl Hart. He'll look for someone else. The Crow's looking to create a loose man. They've done just that. Stephen Rowe takes the mark. Centre forward for the Crows now. 11-13 plays 9-3. Rowe goes in long. Hodges on a lead. Blocked out by three Essendon defenders. And Paul Morris takes a good mark. Seems to have heard it. Got a kick in the thigh to boot. He goes wide across the ground. Craig O'Brien trying to get rid of Daryl Hart. O'Brien, little chip over the top. Andrew Jarman gets on the mark before Antrobus can get away. Antrobus looking to go one way, then the other, then puts the ball really into no one in particular. Bombers will have the fly. Super grab Andrew Underwood. Been a good player tonight, Andrew Underwood. Goes back to Antrobus, who's made up ground now. The little kick off the ground. Marshall will cut that out. Has a player to handball, runs straight into a listen to the opponent. But Filky, well butted up by Marshall. The kick is not good to Andrew Jarman. Cut out by Paul Salmon. He's got help there in Paul Morrish. So the Essendon defenders doing it okay, but they need to kick goals. They're 22 points down. Bruce Lindsay in late. Courageous mark by Ed Considine. She's wearing a bit of bruising on the eye. Andrew Underwood butters up well. Don't know that that went 10 yards. Bruce Lindsay on the mark. Underwood goes short. Has Spawn on the lead. Finds a pinpoint. Darren Smith up from the ground now, so not much height back there for the Crows. Spawn goes to the centre of the ground, centre half four, ball cut out by Scott Lee. A lot of telling kicks in this second half. Salmon, no one on the mark, gets a cut, run down. And the little short mark taken by Gary O'Donnell. He goes on lead. Lead is to David Flood. He too has cramped David Flood, the leading goal kicker for the Bombers tonight with three. Salmon has two. Graham Corn's coming down now. He wants to be in the dugout where the action is. As David Flood will shoot for goal, 45 degree angle. He'll be kicking from about 49 metres. Good kick from Flood. Looks right on cue, won't quite make the distance. Big fly from behind by the Bombers. Comes to ground for Hamilton. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. Well, a real backman's kick by Hamilton. Touch, touched off the boot, I beg your pardon. So it'll be a toss in, a throw in. Right forward pocket for the Bombers. Negri. No one can really do much with that tap. Comes to ground. The handball is good to Filke. He's off. 
Well, he's picked out Marshall, had to pick him out. And two Essendon players did it on his chest. Maynard wants it in the centre of the ground. That's the way it goes. No, Marshall decides to go long. And the ball is thumped out of bounds. Three bombers there. Well, so it'll be Salmon in ruck. Corns, well, tentative. But he has a chance of scoring an historic victory. Michael Taylor, pensive next to him. Of course, Michael Taylor, assistant coach at Collingwood last year. You can't do much more than a premiership at the Magpies. Oh, good handball from Scott Lee. Looks for McGuinness now. McGuinness heavily tackled by Craig O'Brien. O'Brien forces the ball and McGuinness over the line. McGuinness, well, almost best on ground tonight, I think. John Klug not far behind him. For the Bombers, a little bit harder. Well, that ball goes straight to Thompson. Now to Matthew Kelly, Stephen Rowe takes it in the end. Linda the fly, off hands to Hardy, gets a handball out to Linda, should get the handball away from Kirky. He's got Clue. Now Clue has to just kick a goal. He goes around the corner and touched. Well, possibly not the best option. He had players running either side. So John Clue still hasn't kicked a goal. And he's kicked four points. 11-13 now, the Crows, 79. Essendon in 11-14, I beg your pardon, to 80. Ball back in play. The Bombers getting that ball in pretty quick now. Kevin Sheedy, he wouldn't be too happy, but he's got some players to come back yet. And just remember, there's the scoreboard, 23 points to difference. Names like Tim Watson, what a great player he's been. And he's not out there tonight. Greg Anderson, been a star in the AFL since he's gone there. Still suffering with that shoulder injury. Good pressure by the Crows, they force that ball out of bounds. The camaraderie starting to show Nigel Smart, he's pretty keen to get back there, so is Mark Micken. Nigel Smart been a good player tonight. Negri against Alessio. In fact, it's Somerville back on the ground. Klug again, caught from behind by Hughes, but the handball is good from Hart. So he's got Filke, he decides to go long. Again, not a good option. Danaher can't control the ball, goes out of bounds. But at least the ball is in the Crows' forward line. Time now on the Crows' side. Eight minutes to play. They're 23 points in front. Clue takes the ruck work against Salmon. Salmon wins easy. First of the ball is Hills. Not a good handball, but McGuinness will give away the free. In the back to Redbone. In fact, it's O'Brien. O'Brien, back pocket for the Adelaide Crows. Kicks from the back pocket, sends it up to centre wing. Negri in front, should mark. Not paid. Going to hold him a little longer in this league. Ball funnelled out. Hills again. Antrobus with pace. Goes through this 50 metre square. One way or the other gets caught. He gets the handball away. And the fight is on. Scott Lee takes a good mark and the umpire's called play on. Antrobus and Jarman going on with it. Crow's not interested. Antrobus still going. Handball from Kelly to Maynard is good. Maynard should go long. No, goes Hodges on the lead. Cut out by Danaher. Now Grenvold. O'Brien with space. Has the loose man if he wants him, but decides to go long. Oh, well cut out. Scott Lee. Gee, hasn't he got better as the game's gone on? McGuinness played well all night. Has Rowe. Rowe has space. He decides to back his time. McGuinness wants it. Not a good kick. T seems to be touched up the beat. No, it's not. Well, Smith in the centre of the game only has to handball, but will kick the goal himself. And kicks it in the left half. Garrett Smith gets his first. 45,000 people love every minute of it. Well, there's no way the Bobbies are going to get out of this now. 12-14-86. 29 points the lead. And smiles start to appear. Darren Smith has his first. A tremendous performance by the Crows. The first time we've seen them against the AFL. And they're going to chalk up an historic victory. Smith 28 kicking the goal. The handball from Kelly was superb. Kevin Sheedy said, we're the fittest. But I've got Mark Picken now replacing Romano Negri. Negri been a star all night. But Micken takes over and wins easy. The ruck work by the Crows has been good. But Essendon hasn't given up. They win that ball now and send it forward. The lead is good. And the lead hits 
Ed Considine on the chest. Tough kick from that pocket, not too far around, 45 degree angle. But he'll have to kick from 50 metres. And the Bombers need goals. They have nine on the board, the Crows have 12. 12-14 plays 9-3, Considine. Picture of concentration, done some good work tonight. Lovely kick, but can't work that pocket out. And some of the AFL teams are going to have trouble with that pocket. Very hard to kick goals. Paul Salmon comes off the ground, and so does Tony McGuinness. McGuinness did an absolute picture tonight. They wave like the way he played, and Salmon done a lot of hard work for the Bombers. Nigel Smart back on the ground, sends the ball long. Also back on the ground, Eddie Hocking. Good mark by Hamilton, tried hard all night. As Bruce McAvaney said earlier, had a stopping roll on Bruce Linder and did it pretty well. The handball from the Crows is good. Oh, tough tackle, but Maynard hold, rides it well. Hamilton again, a good kick to Kieran Spawn. Spawn will shoot for goal. Tony McGuinness, well, he has to be happy with his game tonight. There weren't too many people in Adelaide unhappy with him coming home. Had a tremendous career with the Glenelg side here. Went over to Footscray, won a McGarry medal here. Had some 1982 McGarry medal as Kieran Spawn puts that through for the Bombers. And they creep a little closer. Time may yet beat them, it probably will, but they've got their 10th. 10 4 64 to 12 14 86. 22 points to the margin. Kieran Spawn has his first. The Bombers have their 10th. Well, normally when you get 45, 30,000 people at Football Park, there's only four minutes to go. They start to leave at about three-quarter time. They're staying to enjoy, savour every minute. Micken, Marshall behind him, played a great game on his wing, the veteran. Micken wins that tap, doesn't go to anyone in particular. Andrew is still running. Well, he should, he's got fresh legs. Cut out by Thompson. Thompson bumps him well, but Andrew gets the free kick, so not well at all. Antrobus with the kick. Centre wing he is for the Bombers. Short kick, but he picks out his man in Dean Bailey back on the ground. Haven't sighted too much of him, but he sends the ball in long. Centre half forward looking for Somerville. Good body, Somerville. Comes to spawn. Can he kick another one in as many minutes? May bounce. Doesn't get the favour of the bounce. Goes through for a point. So another point to the Bombers. Their fifth. 10-5-65. They trail the Crows. 12-14-86. Warhurst to kick in. Well, he can take all the time he likes, but he picks out his former teammate in Rodney Maynard. Maynard been a good player. Not too many of the Crows haven't done their work. Good mark by Paul Morris. Gets on with the business. Spawn again, a lot of touches in this final term. Kick not good. Both sides players now starting to run out of legs. Thompson done some good clearing work, but again, his delivery is not that good. And the player we don't know, number 50. Another kick for him. Well read off hands by Eric Dean Bailey. This should let Essendon in for an easy goal. No opponents at all for David Flood. Now Antrobus. Ball straight up, straight down. Oh, good mark and defence. Tom Warhurst. No, he's paid the free. He paid the free kick to Matthew Kelly. Matthew Kelly. Only a couple of crows I've noticed wearing a dark armband. I'm sorry I can't inform you of why. Klug should take this, will recover best. Gives the handball off to Maynard. Klug and Maynard been two of the crows best. Smith with good position, can't complete the mark. Stephen Rowe trying hard, hasn't stopped. Neither is Klug, gets another touch. Sends it in, Hodges with the leap. Almost a spectacular mark, but well read in defence by Gary O'Donnell. Gets the handball out. Wanganin runs for him, he's been Awful tonight, Wanganin. Hardly a touch. About his third kick. Let's say four and be kind. Robbie Thompson wants to see that. No, it's Bruce Lindsay looking for a player. Gee, the handball's been good by the Crows. They butter up again. Lindsay sends the ball in. No one in particular. Stephen Rowe fights hard. And the ball, well, we're nearly going to get a bounce. It's tired. The player's very tired now. Less than a minute to play. This is going to be a very pleasing victory for that man, Graham Corns. No smiles yet, but we may see a hint. He doesn't give much away, the coach. But he would be more than satisfied, if anything, by their commitment tonight, the Crows. They've shown the goods. And all he's got to say is, hey guys, you've got another 30 games of this. If you want to be anywhere near the finals, holding the ball played against Essendon.
Melbourne, so the Crows have taken the edge now. They've got this in the bag. 24 minutes and 45 seconds on the shot clock. Hodges and Danaher again. It's been an enthralling battle. Hodges is going to take a free kick. No, he's not. He's given one away. No, I beg my own pardon. He's going to take the free kick. So Hodges gets his opportunity to boot four. Dead in front, 30 metres out. Maybe not even that. Between 25 and 30. And aren't the Crows glad that he's settled his contractual misdemeanour? He's made it four for the night. The Crows have won this. 13 for here's the siren. A tremendous victory. Crowd rises as one. Graham Corns would be a very, very happy man. The Crows have virtually led all night. They led by 15 points at quarter time, 4-3 to 2 goals. The Bombers would be disappointed. The Crows were down to a five-point lead at half time. 6-6, six, six, have a listen to that crowd. 45,000, stand as one. They're pretty happy. Not a lot of smiles. The first part is completed. The job has been done. They led by five points at half time, 8-11 at three-quarter time. And at the full-time siren, 13, 14, 92 to 10, 5, 65. And just remind ladies and gentlemen, series tickets for the Cameron Crows. Home matches will include a reserve seat. And a bonus ticket for Foster's Cup games played in Adelaide. All right, they OK, I'll just put a time. OK. On Tuesday morning. And D-time will be released from the new play on Monday. Please ensure you have a ticket to watch the Cameron Crows in action in 1991. Have you got that, Steve? One, two, three. Yes, Brian. Thank you. It's got him. Let's see what he's got it. That way, uh, when you uh, yeah, you don't see the court. Right? Disappears like a clock. When you've got someone else, you tend to face that way anyway. Yeah. When you've got a guest. You're tired a bit there, Andy. Sorry? How's that? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, okay. Yes, yep. Might need a couple of goes. Well, thanks very much, Narelle. 45,000 people came to Football Park here, really not knowing what to expect. What they got was a powerhouse display from the Adelaide Crows. They led at every change, 
4-3 to two goals at the first quarter. They led by five points in the in sorry. In three, two, one. Thanks very much, Narelle. Well, 45,000 people came to Football Park here tonight, really not knowing what to expect. And what they got was a superb performance from the Adelaide Crows. They led by every change and every move that Essendon coach Kevin Sheedy could throw at them. Well, they just came back with more. In the end, they ran out fairly comfortable leaders, winners. Oh, God. Sorry. And again. Thanks very much, Narelle. Well, 45,000 people came down here to Football Park tonight to witness a tremendous occasion. They weren't quite sure what to expect, but what they got was a powerhouse performance from the Adelaide Crows. The Crows went into the game as underdogs. No one had ever seen them before, but they led at every change. Quarter time, half time, three quarter time. And at the final siren, they were virtually kicking away from the Bombers. Scott Hodges was brilliant at full forward with four goals. David Flood, the leading goal kicker for the Bombers with three. The final score, the Adelaide Crows, 13-14-92, beat the Bombers, 10-5-65, in front of 45,000 people. It was a great night. I'd be happy if you take it as a take. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, five, four, three. Well, Graham, congratulations, but I think uh, all of South Australia know it's only a trial game, but I mean, it was an important one to win, and you made that pretty clear earlier on today. Well, uh, given the fact our preparation had been so intense, we wanted a very good performance tonight to justify that and to gauge how effective it had been. and. Uh, the performance was good against very spirited opposition and uh, you know the fact that we had such a great crowd and such a great atmosphere obviously meant that we were looking for a very good result. Graeme, you're glad that one, that game, is out the road now? No, Max, it, yeah, it, it's, it was a good result, it's a win. It means nothing in the long run other than it's a, a step in our preparation. I mean, we, we play for Foundation, not Foundation Cup, for for Foster's Cup points in a couple of weeks and then March the 22nd we've got our first match for Premiership points and that's when the real crunch comes, that's when the real test is. OK, your players tonight, I mean, there wasn't anyone that really didn't have a dip tonight. Well, they were all motivated, they all won the hard ball, they all contested and committed themselves and uh, that was pleasing and uh, whilst they were tired I think they had confidence in their legs and it was you know, a very, very productive hit out for us, as long as we don't get carried away with it. Exactly. So, I mean, you're happy you won, but let's uh, not get too over the top about it. No, it doesn't mean anything, does it, really? Do me fine, mate. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Um, we're going over to um, Essendon now. Yep. Oh, mate. All right. Yep. No worries. Yeah, hi, I'm so-and-so from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, I realise that. That's just for news. We're pissing that off now. Uh, they, won't let, they, won't, they won't let us in, mate. We're outside of the dressing room in one of the corridors and Cornsey agreed to come out and do the interview, but he doesn't want us inside the rooms. Well, we are. This is why probably we did this tonight, just to um, get these small problems out the road, eh? Uh, he's not letting anyone in the rooms. Oh, Max Bashir is in there. <laughs> Yeah, yes, we, we, sh we should be okay. Now, what about, I just go and, um, News want us to grab someone from Sheedy. Have we, have we got a floor manager that could come down here and help us out? Oh, sorry. He is, he is right next to me. I didn't realise, I saw him pulling cables before, I didn't realise. Can you go get Kevin Sheedy? You know what he looks like? No? Yeah, okay. Just, uh, for channel seven, just say you want him for Channel 7 come around here. We're just, while we're waiting for the Crows to finish, we're just grabbing Sheedy. No. Where?
Tell him we've done Graham Corns. Mate, is that alright? Background? Yeah, and we're just waiting on Sheedy. We want 10% of the gate, Max, if that'd be alright. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Max, he's pissed. How you going? Good? Um, Sheedy's on his way, he's just having a yarn to someone in the corridor. I've um, grown a bit, as you can tell. So, sorry. What do you think? Oh, good. She's yeah. terrific to see the people there, wasn't it? Yeah. And they play well. Women will play well. Yeah. Were you a bit surprised? Yes, I was. I must admit, they were. Uh, they're putting together a good side and they're not all there yet either. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay, we've got um, Kevin Sheedy here if Adelaide's rolling. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you, got, terrible, you got a few notes here you want to say? Uh, right, ah, so how's it been, alright? So earlier it was suggested Adelaide might win five or six games if they were lucky. Could you see them winning a few more? Oh, Jesus, no, no one more than that. No one about that. Yeah, no, that'd be a good. That'd be, uh, that'd be a good side. You know, I reckon. Jesus, Negri's played pretty well. I he's, he's, he didn't realise he's that good. Negri? Okay, no worries. Five, four, three. Well, Kevin, from an Adelaide point of view, what we'd like to know: what did you think of the Adelaide side tonight? Well, I thought it was a good, uh, good side. Uh, they played pretty good footy. They were very committed, and uh, I mean their hand passes that quick. I thought they had slingshots. I mean, I mean, uh, ground level, the uh, ball whizzing through the air. I thought, Jesus, you know, but, uh, <laughs> they moved the ball fairly quickly, and um, I thought that surprised our, our, our fellas. And uh, some really heavy bumps and good tackles on that early. Uh, really, I thought it by a quarter time. I thought, well. Now you know what Adelaide, I went to the side I said, I said, now you know what football in Adelaide's going to be like in the, in the uh, AFL and, uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that are going to come over here, go home pretty tired and sore and uh, without points. Well, it would be fair to say that uh, you're pretty surprised the way Adelaide played? Well, I wasn't sure. I mean, nobody was sure. I mean, we all come along tonight. That's what, you know, I, I uh, spoke to um, Bob Haven and a couple of boys late last year and I said, let's have a practice match before we really get in the heavy stuff, you know. And you guys were coming up in to a game, I think, in about eight or ten days, and um, I thought it'd be a good, good opportunity to play before uh, that game, and um, and over here too, because I mean, you get, we get a good crowd and terrific weather. Well, Kevin, it's been suggested uh, by many so-called football experts that Adelaide might be lucky to win five or six games in the Australian Football League. As a coach of many, many years, what do you think? Well, I mean, look, if you look at all the experts, they try to tell you the Adelaide Cup winner, the Sydney Cup winner, the Melbourne Cup winner, but they never can tell you, so I wouldn't take too much notice of all the experts. So I think that um, the way the whole game was put together, the way the uh, players really got behind their new side, uh, I think they're going to do really well. And, um, and, and what's going to really make it hard, even after this year and the, and the years to come, is that, I mean, we've got three of your teams playing in Melbourne. 
There's three, there's 60 blokes in Melbourne from South Australia. I mean, you better leave them in Melbourne because if they ever come back, I don't think I think we'll get wiped. Wiped. I think I really think Victorian clubs will struggle if uh, South Australia really handle the whole scene right over the next five years. I really so believe that. Be fair to say something around the 10 game mark this year. Well, I'm not going to give a figure because I don't know what the others are like. I mean, they, they might be, um, you know, better. The competition is going to be better this year. And I think that everybody's got to realise that the drafting and the evening up process that's been happening in the AFL for the last four or five years, I don't think that anybody knows over the border how we're all going to play because by the time another couple of drafts uh, come up, which is your next internal draft, then you have another draft, say, in June, um, I think that the... the the whole season, particularly in Melbourne, is, is a big query, big, big query on it. And uh, I'm just not sure. I know South West Australia have a good side because they've got some really good players coming up at 22 and 23 years of age. And I think that um, the Melbourne sides, if they're not careful, will really struggle this year. And if South Australia can get one or two players back, um, look at what they're, they're, the players that they're looking at now, where they do go for one or two more experiences compared to a 20 year old that's going to be you know, another five or seven year player for them. I think they've got some tough decisions coming up, good decisions, and um, that'll hold them in good stead. And they'll be a good side this year, don't worry about that. OK, Kevin, thanks very much, and you're always short for a word. We do appreciate it. Well, I'm short, period. <laughs> thanks, mate. Thanks well, very much. OK, well, good I'm to see you. Yeah. Hey, mate. Thank you. Happy? Yeah, yes, good enough. OK, Donny. Now, we'll just... Thanks very much, Kevin. Um, we'll just um, have a word to, we've got Bob Hammond here, he's just going off with Sheeds, so when he comes um, back we'll just ask him if we could, uh, he's Chairman of Selectors for Adelaide, we'll just ask him if he could give us a few players like Tony McGuinness and we'll do that little piece. Oh. Yeah, okay. How you going mate, good thanks. So how, Donnie, how did it go in all? Yeah, 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 yeah. It just all, yeah, it's just all um, new for everyone. I think uh, we, are we doing a Collingwood practice match as well. I think before the Geelong match, I think we might be doing one. No, he's saying no. Right. All right. Well, listen, I'll go and do that, and I'll return. Hello, Mum. I've got a migraine. Max is gone. Andrew Gray is going to do it instead of Max. Mate, okay, are you there? Oh. Are you there, Donny? Okay, I've got Tony McGuinness, right, and it'll be, hi, I'm Tony McGuinness from the Adelaide Crows. You're watching AFL Live on 7. Or you're watching the footy on 7.
Okay. Which one? Doesn't matter. Straight into the camera. Hold that. You're going to hold it. Straight down the lens. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony McGuinness. Hi, I'm Tony McGuinness from Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL Live on Channel 7. Beautiful. Straight down the camera. I bet I messed With up. a smile. Kiss off, gentlemen. Okay, whenever you're ready. With a smile, too. Hi, I'm Tony McGuinness from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL Live on Channel 7. <laughs> one, one more. I'm not doing it again. And the thumbs up a little bit higher. See, oh, have a look at yourself here. Wasn't in front. Bring your thumbs up. Good head. On. It's a good head, that. Good yeah. Haircut. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tony McGuinness from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL Live on Channel Seven. <laughs> High enough? Happy? No worries. Yeah, Beautiful. no worries. Thanks, mate. All right, that's great. Charles. Uh, Andrew Jarman. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew. Jarman from the Adelaide Crows, you're watching AFL Live on 7. So it's hi, I'm Andrew Jarman, you're watching. No, hi, I'm Andrew Jarman from the Adelaide Crows. All oh, right, you, you're watching AFL Live on Channel 7. On 7, on seven right. Okay. Hi, I'm Andrew Jarman from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL on 7. Yeah, just start, uh, start again and do a big more smile and three seconds at the start and then when you finish, just don't say anything. Uh, this, right. Okay, five, four, three. Hi, I'm Andrew Jarman from the LA Crows and you're watching AFL on seven. <laughs> All right, you got, we're serious, we're not... No, that's it. Is that that's it? Oh, great, good. great, thanks mate. Uh, happy with that? Okay. Thanks. Yep, no worries, thanks very much. What else do you want to do? Oh, I'm just going to do one more. You can do one, Kim. I love the football. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the change, change rooms. <laughs> Hey there, mate. Tom Warhurst. Just uh, give us that. Hold that there. Come over here. Don't Oops. You just look straight down the lens. Straight down the lens. Don't be scared, Tommy. I mean, look, look. Which one am I looking at? That one? This one. Here. You're you you going to tell me to go or what? Yeah, you ready? Go. Hi, I'm Tom Warhurst from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL Live on 7. Okay. Yeah, no? Yeah. Yep. Like smile, and then at the end of it, just pause, like keep smiling, right. and just hold it. Yep, okay. I can do that. All right, just keep looking down the camera. Okay, five, four, three. Hi, I'm Tom Warhurst from the Adelaide Crows, and you're watching AFL Live on Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Donny, <laughs> okay, no worries. Thanks, Good, mate. No Thanks worries. a lot. Uh, uh, that, that's three. Okay, we're happy. No worries. Pleasure. I'll come and see you. Yeah, are you going up the room? Okay. So you're finished, Max? Finished? No worries. Yeah. Thank you.